I think we are live. Welcome to the NASCAR Rookie Podcast. I am Danny B. We have it here on my channel. Let me make sure I bring this as close as I can to me because I know my microphone always is so much quieter than everybody else's for some reason. But hello. We have a controversial one to discuss from Kansas this weekend. So, fellas, what should we talk about first? I think you just said it. Yeah, I think, <laughs> I think we dive right into that Kansas race. I, I, we'll, I guess we'll go around the room and talk about what we thought of it. I thought it was a race where... You know, with the really cold conditions, I think we both, I know all the conversation afterwards is about the rules package. We'll talk about that. But I do think we saw kind of the, the best and the worst at the same time. Like, it, not at the same time, but in separate points in this race of the rules package. With the uh, with the higher grip in the track, I thought restarts, and I thought even early on in the race, um, leader couldn't get away. And there were at least some passes for the lead early on. I remember Chase Elliott passing Harvick. You know, I thought the racing was great. They were two and three wide. It was, it was exciting. It's what NASCAR, I think, was hoping for when they introduced this rules package. And then the end of the race, everyone knows those last. 30 laps the frustration of watching Harvick work way harder than Logano have a better car than Logano even seem to be ducking out of the dirty air as much as possible and could never get a run to actually get next to him and, and try to make a pass so that was super frustrating to watch but uh, overall first race of the third round of the playoffs didn't see too many surprises other than maybe the winner Joey Logano I think locking himself into the championship four was something not many people saw coming at least not this early in the round so I'll, I'll let you guys go from there well, it's no seeker who I wish would have won the guy in third place, which I think it, it was pretty interesting how he was able to somehow charge so late. I don't know if it was because those two were kind of like doing the blocking 400 or whatever they were doing up there, or if he really was just like found some late speed. But it would have been interesting to see how the race would have played out um, if they had like another 10 laps or, or so and see who would have won that one. But uh, ultimately, Joey Logano gets in and – I think that was the 88 team's last big chance to swing for all they got. I mean, they got a solid mile and a half program, but we'll see what happens with them. But what do you think, Jarrett? Uh, I think my ass is still frozen to the seats in Kansas. <laughs> like, I, How I, was I, it I, out there? It was cold. It was pretty cold. I, I've been – I'd been pretty used to like the, the summer months of it feeling like it was in the seventies and, you know, I'd go down to Daytona or Talladega and it's in the seventies and the eighties and nice. And it was in the seventies in Kansas on Saturday and then God decided that he did not like cup NASCAR fans um, because geez, like it, it, it was, it was cold, but the racing was better there than it was on TV. And I think that's because I was able to look through the field and watch everybody race. Um, don't get me wrong. I'm, I'm not happy with the way the finish went. You know, I kind of knew how it was going and I saw the Gano fan in front of me. She's like cheering and like all, and then she's getting all scared. And I'm like, yeah, I get it. But he's got it in the bag. <laughs> like, like you'd have to be a moron not, not to win this race. Um, but there was at the start of the race, first stage, this, I feel like this is a, a tale of two races. The first stage, was great and i think that's because you had people going front to back the slow cars going back you know fast cars moving through the field so i'm not surprised by that but like the second stage sort of started the downward trend and then it just like fell off a cliff that last run there i mean around the track there were a few people racing but it was mostly single file um I thought for sure, though, even with how hard it was to pass, that Harvick was going to get by Logano, like with how fast he came up on him. And then he just got stuck there. And then Bowman got into the picture. And I think Kozlowski was after him, and he got into the picture. And uh, I can't remember if it was like Chase Elliott or someone else after that. And I'm just, mm -hmm. you know, and just everyone kind of stalled out. And it reminded me of a specific race. And I said this in one of my videos. It reminded me of the 2013 Daytona 500. And people might like scratch their heads at that one, but they hear me out. That race like was all single file, so yeah, there's that parallel. But it was a bubble of air between the cards. Like you couldn't get in, into that bubble of air to move around mm -hmm. in that package that they had. And I think it was kind of the same with this, except instead of a bubble of air, you know, it was like a giant ten mile wall of air between the cars where you get to it and just everyone stalls out. Um, I think people are overreacting, saying this is the worst race of the year. Or this is the worst race, you know, even of this package, like, you know, I mean, I'm sorry, Danny, but the auto club race was a thing this year and last, like it, it, just, Pocono last year. Oh, 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 oh. First, we the don't, first Pocono second one was okay. First well, one. Yeah. We don't, we don't talk about June Pocono. Um, there's been some other bad ones this year. Yeah. It's just wasn't the worst one. Don't get me wrong. It was not great. I, I, I still say I thought it was 
good overall. I still say the worst the worst race of the Gen 6 era came at the track you least expect it, and that was 2018 Fall Talladega. I'm, I'm still going I'm still going 2014 Richmond. A minus 2012 Auto Club. That's my least favorite. But yeah, no, oh, that's not Gen 6. Yeah, you're sorry. You said Gen 6. Uh, yeah, I'll have to think about it. Then, yeah, that, that Talladega one is is up there. You're right. I don't, I don't know. I'd have, to, I'd have to think back. 2013 Daytona was rough because my guy blew an engine after leading the most laps, so I might go that one. <laughs> yeah, Danny, <laughs> Danny has 20... a personal vendetta against 2018 Talladega. <laughs> well, I will say 2013 Daytona, I can definitely relate because I was just thinking, Dale, do something. Dale, do something. Dale, do something. He <laughs> did. I mean, yeah. mostly, and then he just sort of sat defense for Jimmy Johnson. Um, I don't know. Focusing on Kansas again, though, it's it's. I, I'm with you. It was not the worst race even this year at the package. I, in general, even in my video, and I, I, for the first time in two and a half years, I really like actually was a net negative on the rules package in my video. And but even afterwards, I, I gave it a positive score on my on my groovy gauge. I gave it a 65 out of 100. I thought overall it was still a pretty good race, even though it was frustrating as heck watching the end of that race. I was on the edge of my seat glued to the TV because I did know if Logano by some chance did make a big mistake or if, you know, Joey Gase moved right up in front of him in the center of the corner, you know, I knew at least then there was a chance of Harvick making a pass. I think if we want to transition a little bit to more talking about the, the fallout and the reaction, because I do agree. I saw a few people. I think Jeff Gluck was one of the most notable ones I saw tweeting about. You know, he kind of acknowledged that this maybe was like a breaking point for a lot of people with the rules package. This seemed to be the most vocal people were you know, uh, speaking out against what they saw at the end of Kansas since this package was revealed. I mean, ever since it's been revealed, there's been naysayers, but all at once, kind of a swarm of of just, hey, this isn't it. We got to do something so that this isn't what the end of these races look like anymore. It did feel like that was more vocal than than ever before. And, um, you know, I, I do think a lot of it has to do with how important this race was. And, and honestly, what I said in my video also was, NBC presented the end of that race beautifully. They did that awesome split screen. Mm -hmm. They did that awesome stuff where they're focusing on both drivers. I thought the commentary, they did a good job of being quiet when they needed to and just letting the action on the track speak for itself. Uh, I thought the camera angles were fantastic. It was great having the camera guys in the TV booth all back at the at the racetrack. So I think overall it was, it had the makings of an, of an all-time great NASCAR finish that never even came close to, to truly materializing. And because everything else was perfect, we know the track is good, everything like that, it became clear to his day to everyone that the cars were really what was what were, you know, stopping the drivers from putting on a good show. Yeah. If you and, look at I, a, if you look at on paper, the top three were separated by but each position was separated by three tenths of a second. On paper, that sounds like it was one of the most exciting races of the year. But it never quite reached that. And I, so that's what I think it is. I think we saw the cars close together. The TV broadcast was fantastic. It was a high stakes race, high, two great drivers, Logano versus Harvick, but it never really felt like it was a real battle. And I think that's what woke a lot of, or yeah, I don't want to say woke fans up because even I knew the package wasn't perfect, but I think this is what, you know, turned a lot of people, what, why a lot of people said this was the final straw, I think, and that a lot of fans are hoping for a, a radical change. If not next year, hopefully the next gen car just, completely starts over from what the gen six was i don't want to see any similarities between the next gen the gen six at this point besides four tires so i don't know i, I don't know what you guys thought but i think i think all that combined is what made this race stand out or the finish of this race stand out as you know the final straw reflect back to 2013 auto club and we know how exciting that finish was taking out the fact that hamlin and logano wreck those two were fighting hard as can be and you didn't know what was going to happen in third place is gaining and you don't know what they're going to do this race had the makings to be something like that but it was just the fact that like when that second place car got there goes left oh i can't pass now uh, i think the part that was like at, at one point i literally got up out of my seat because i was so excited because it looked like we were about to have a uh, three car battle for the lead because at one point it was like Logano's up here, Harvick's in the middle, Bowman's low. They're all like on each other's quarter panel, but then they just si cycled back out single file. It's like, dang, they like two cars made their move for the lead and they couldn't carry it through because the cars are not designed to do that. I, I think, and I've been getting flack for this since you know the first race with this package, but that, that finish between Keselowski and Logano were. I believe it was it Kozlowski couldn't get past Logano, but it was always close. I've been getting flack for this on Twitter and in my comment sections for a long time, but it, it proves that close racing doesn't always mean good racing. Like like we talked about 2018 Talladega. 
close racing. Those cars were all close together, but it, was, like, it wasn't a good race. And I think that was like put on full display here. Is just it, it, it was it was frustrating at the track, especially when you could see all day in the pack. There was plenty of passing. There really was yeah. um, until the la- I'd say until about the last stage. Like at that point, everyone had settled into where they were at, and it just unless you had like horrible tires, which even then, like I think Kyle Busch stayed out, restarted first, and was fifth, and all day he was running a fifteenth. You know, and and I'm not saying this to you know because you know I'm not going to hate on Kyle Busch for it. I just think that if if you're a car that's stuck in the back of the pack and it's one of the slower cars, you should not be able to be faster just because of air. That uh, it's it, not it just, by that big of a difference. Yes, like, clean air yeah. always matters, but this it's just night and day. It was it was so so frustrating at the track because I'm sitting there recording like something something could happen, something could happen. <laughs> And, and what makes it more frustrating for me is that, like, I was there for the slide job finish. Like, I know, like, the how these, you know, close races turn out. You know, I was, the, I was, I was there for a few other races, at, you know, at Chicago and Michigan, for instance, that turned out to be, like, last lap fights. You know, even, I guess we can include Talladega just because, you know, in Daytona, just because they were close fights for the win at the end. And it's just that the feeling wasn't there. I mean, you, you'd see these runs and be like, yes, yes, oh, no. And, and, th- and that was the part that was disheartening because it was like, you know, after freezing my ass off all day, after, you know, watching, you know, I, I'm going to be real, Logano and Hartwick aren't the two that I'm sitting there like, man, I hope they're fighting for the win. <laughs> well, like, let's be real. Yeah. Uh, I think I mean, you, don't get me wrong, I was rooting for Bowman. <laughs> you would have low key been, I would have low key, I would have high key been very happy to seen that finish play out like the Darlington Xfinity race from this fall. Like, mm-hmm. and honestly, at one point they were like, Harvick would make a run. The gunner would throw a block. At one point I thought it was going to end very much like that race where they would do something. Bowman would go around and, and steal it, but it, it never did. I was, I was interesting listening to, as I was listening to Logano's radio that whole time and down the stretch. And, and I will say the guy who's probably working the hardest out of, you know, Harvick, Logano, was TJ Majors. <laughs> yeah, he was in Logano's ear constantly, letting him know where Harvick, what lane Harvick was in. So there was certainly an art, there was certainly a skill to Logano holding Harvick off, but it just wasn't, it isn't what fans are hoping to see. It wasn't in the driver's hands the way NASCAR you know, consistently tries to say this package is. When NASCAR says this rules package is in the driver's hands, they mean because uh, all the cars are pretty much the same, and so really the driver is all that matters. But the driver isn't necessarily doing much more. It's just that the driver matters. I mean, that is why Harvick and Hamlin have won all the races this year. They're two of the best drivers. When NASCAR introduces low downforce packages, and we can go back and find plenty of press releases from years past where they introduced a low downforce package, they always say it's putting the, the, the car back in the driver's hands. But in that case, they do mean in the sense that there's more off-throttle time, there's more instability in the car. So no matter what the rules package is, NASCAR is going to say it puts the car back in the driver's hands. It mm-hmm. doesn't mean anything. And unfortunately, I think that's what people saw at the end of Kansas. It's just that if that's what it looks like when you say the drivers have control, it's just it feels like a lie. Like you said, the constant he's got to run, he's got to run. Oh, no, not this time. Got it this time. No, not this time. And after you do it mm-hmm. 30 times in a row, 30 straight laps, it just gets by the end. You're just like, oh, he has a run, not going anywhere. And, you know, it's just it it loses its luster very very quickly so yeah so, that, that's... So, uh, here's a uh, here's proposition everyone always says oh the best thing to do is big motor small blade well i'm gonna give you all a choice uh you can either have up the horsepower to 750 and keep a high spoiler or we keep the engine as it is and we go to a lower spoiler what would you do I'd, I'd be willing, if this is for like next year, I don't know what to do with the next gen car. Next gen car, I'd like mid-size spoiler. I'd like 600 or more horsepower if, if can be. And I'd like as much reduction of side force and, and things as possible. But for like 2021, if NASCAR is to change things for 2021, uh, I'm all for keeping the 550 horsepower if it just means reducing the spoiler. Because I understand NASCAR truly believes more manufacturers will enter the sport if the horsepower is not 900. And, and you know, it's a little bit lower than that, if that's a better entry point. And I'm convinced that they will get more more manufacturers in the sport, which is good for the overall health and good for competition. So I'm with it. I don't think you need 
900 horsepower or 800 horsepower like they had in 2017 and 2018 or i guess they had 750 those years i don't remember exactly what it was you don't need that much horsepower because 2018 was pretty cra- pretty crappy mile and a half racing outside of chicago land that year so i'm not really itching to go back to exactly what we had in 2018 i just think i just think overall we should be working to uh, nascar should be working to edit and adjust the 2018 rules package rather than edit and adjust what we have right now in 2020 on the mile and a half so that that's that's basically where i'm at can you repeat the, the options real quick, Danny? So go to a 750 horsepower, keeping a taller spoiler, or keep 550 horsepower and you get a smaller spoiler. 750 taller spoiler. It's almost exactly, aside from not being 900, what the 2014 package would be. And that's, over time, I think you can build up to that. That's what I'm thinking too, and that's well, what I would do. Even in 2014, if, if that's how big the spoiler is, then sure, I'd consider that because the spoiler oh, it, in 2014 it, is not it, what it is in 2020. It's still shorter than 2020 spoiler. It's 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 a it's pretty close though. Like obviously, like a, a, a diecast isn't going to be the best representation, if, but I have a 2014 diecast and I was looking at it and I compared it to one from the 2019 season. And I was like, dang, they had pretty close it, to the same size spoiler then. If you're talking about the really really big ones then no, because that's what they did at Indianapolis and Michigan that year in twenty or in 2015. And that was garbage, absolute garbage. I mean, I, it was it was like a, a predecessor of what we have uh, with this package. And really quick, uh, I saw Dalton Good say uh, in the chat that I don't know what cold is unless I went to 2018 Spring Bristol. Um, dude, I live in the Midwest. I know what cold is. <laughs> Just want to clarify that. Like, I don't no No questioning my ability to understand what cold is here. <laughs> but no, I, it, it's a, it's a hard dilemma. I'm not going to lie because like the, the second half of the season in 2018 was better. Like I always say it was like a Jekyll and Hyde season. Like you got the horrible first half and then like Chicago land on the season just like started rolling. Um, but that's tough because it's not the right package, but I like that you, the faster cars could still pass people in that one, you know? Um, uh, it'd be a step in the right direction, I guess. If, if if you're asking me as I drop my pen right now, I'd go with 2016. Uh, I think that was like the nice sweet spot if you're not going to have the 900 horsepower package. Mm-hmm. I, yeah, I can, I'm, I'm okay at that. I think really 2017 and 2018, the changes they made into those two years on the mile and a half really kind of threw it off a cliff. And that's why we have the radical package we have now. So I'm with you on that. I, I this is what I told my dad. I want a rules package. And obviously this isn't scientific or in any way, shape or form, but I just want a rules package where the faster car can pass the slower car, but I don't want them to just blow by them in one corner. I think it should take, you should catch a guy and it should take two or three laps to pass them. I don't think it should take 40 laps. Like it was taking Harvick to try and pass the Gano this weekend. That's a mistake, but it should take two or three laps. I don't want guys just blowing by, by people. I want the, the lead car to be able to compete and defend, but I don't know. I, I think right now we're pretty far off from that. So I, again, that's not scientific. I don't know. NASCAR can take those notes and do absolutely nothing with them. Cause I don't think they're helpful whatsoever. It's just, it's difficult. I think, I think the the gen six is imperfect and I think they're just gonna have to start over with the next gen. The thing that baffles me is that NASCAR knows it's a problem. Like they know this, this packet, like, of course they can't just come out, you know, Steve O'Donnell and, and Steve Phelps can't come out and say the, pack, sucks, yeah. the package sucks. Yeah. They can't yeah, say that, do that, but you look at next year, and the majority, like if you actually, if you take the super speedways out, the vast majority of races are under the 750 package. It's like 19, I think. Like, yeah. Well, uh, the, so, so you, they know that it's the better option. And I've, I've been, I've questioned for a long time. They better be damn well sure that new manufacturers are coming because if they're betting their future and reducing all this stuff for new manufacturers and it's not a guarantee. That, I'm sorry, that is one of the dumbest moves you could possibly do. It's a gamble, and I get that. You know, you need to gamble probably right now is where we're at, but it's like I'm really questioning where where their thinking is with this. Like, I, I trust they, they know more than me, and there's, I'm probably, you know, talking about something I don't know, but I, I, I'm incredibly um, confused, I guess, and I'm wondering why we can't, at least for next year as a final year with this uh, – with this car, why we can't just go all out and do some kind of different package that is something we had before. You know, I obviously don't make something brand new because it's the last year with it and just be a waste, but go full 750 or, you know, or take off the tapered space. 
cut the spoiler, take off the tapered spacers, and let them go unrestricted again. Because I've been, <laughs> that's the thing that people forget. And when looking at 2015 through 2018, is they had tapered spacers this whole time. That's yeah. why they were going 750. Like these are these are all our 900 horsepower engines being neutered on a regular basis. Yeah. Like I, I just I'm I'm frustrated. I, I as think a fan. I I'd about rather see a car have full capacity under horsepower and NASCAR just slap a little restrictor plate onto it. Because I think that's what we kind of did um, back at the 2018 All Star race, isn't it? Like that was still a different setup to what we have today. And I feel like that was that, even less horsepower than they're running right now. That was it, like four, what was it? I believe so. If they did they because they put like basically a Daytona restrictor plate on, which is reduces it to around 450 or oh, four fifty or four four twenty. Yeah, I, mean, I, I, I don't know. I felt like people enjoyed the racing that was at the t- original All Star race with that one more. I don't know. Yeah. I, I enjoyed it for being a one-time thing. Yeah, like, I remember at the time I even came on here and said, "I don't want this," but it was cool for the All Star race. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. I, I agree with what you said a second ago, Jared. Like they already for next year have already said, "Oh yeah, we're going to run the 750 package at Darlington." They said that they didn't like. They haven't tested that. You know, they. they I mean, unless you count the 2018 or 2018, but they haven't tested that. They just said it. So why not just say that for all the races next year? Like again, it is the last year of the Gen Six. I understand they don't want. They don't want people, you know, blown out the budget to test something that's only going to be used for one year because, you know, some teams will. But I don't think that's actually going to be an obstacle in, in this era with so many one-day shows next year from the sounds of it. Um, even if it's not 750, I just like they did this year, just chop the spoiler in half. Like, just do it. Like, they yeah. didn't, nobody tested it this year coming into this year. I don't think anybody's spending much extra money because at the short tracks this year because they're running the, the small spoiler. I don't know. I'm with you. I think they should just should just – throw the kitchen sink at it because it's the last year i hate i do hate that nascar feels the need to dramatically change things every single year because i, I think when you change things every year fans become you know be, become unhappy quicker because they expect immediate gratification if you change something every year you know nascar fans believe they can get you to they expect you to change things every year so if something's imperfect they immediately are calling for a change like that's why in the last five years we've seen so many changes when it comes to the schedule when it comes to the rules package we've seen some crazy changes in just a couple of years that didn't change at all hardly for for decades you know i, I think you know the rules or the the playoff uh uh format is the, is another huge example they change that every three years for a while and fans just i think that's why fans lost confidence in it for a while because it was changing every year how can you take it legitimately if nascar can't even seem to take it seriously so i don't know i'm with you jared i, I wish they just try something for next year either chop the spoiler in half or or run i, I don't know if they'd ever do the full unrestricted thing uh, unrestricted engine next year I, that sounds oh, like they won't i think realistically nascar is listening to people like us and to people on twitter and social media i i, I would argue more than they should uh I think NASCAR, I wouldn't be shocked if they announced in a couple months that, yeah, we're chopping the spoilers for every race next year. They very well might do that. I I mean, it, it's a long off season. Anything can happen. Yeah. But well, I slap, think right. slap put in the chat. Like he, he put it in the chat. He, he put in the chat. That's like Nashville and Darlington are like all time. Great races are really good races. Say hello to small spoiler on, on next gen. Like, and then this is where I, this is where I'm, I can't jump on the next gen hype train yet. And I know I'm, I'm I'm not trying to be negative on this, but I'm just being real here. They've said they're basing the next gen car, at least partially on the 550 package we have now. So I'm like, everyone that's sitting there thinking that like, don't get me wrong. Like I'm excited for it and I have high hopes for it, but I, I see these fans looking at it. Like it's the saving grace. And it's like, you don't know that. Like, we have not seen more than one car at a time on track. Right, right. We've never like, seen what these cars will race like. Like, it, it could just be literally the same car we have, just a new aero design. I mean, I think it'll be better. I do think it'll be better from it's what we've be, been told. It's going to be different, even just <clears throat> from the different size wheels and the way the steering works. It's very, it's much more modern. It's going to drive differently. And the rear diffuser, I think, will help some of the dirty air. The sides of the cars look a lot smoother, similar more to the Gen 5 or Gen 4, as opposed to the Gen 6, which yeah. around the wheel wells, it's very bendy and lumpy. And I think that contributes to a lot of the side force issues. So I do think the next gen car right now is going to be a better canvas than the gen six is, but you're right. I'm not, I, I don't want to sound like it's definitely a thing. I think we need to continue to voice, you know, fans need to continue to voice their concerns and what kind of racing they want to see and be clear about it. Uh, because I, I do still think the gen six is very much a work in progress and, and it's, it could be great. It could be bad. I don't think it's going to be horrible. 
I, I mean, I'd be shocked if it was just awful. It's like just just absolutely disgusting. But you know, it, it certainly isn't a isn't a surefire thing yet. So it's important for people to continue to you know express what their concerns are and what they want to see on the racetrack. Just keep the X pipes you have now, so I can be happy at the super speed place. Like that's what the Fords are doing in Xfinity, and it's making me happy to hear it. Just give me that nostalgia trip, and I will forgive however bad the racing would be hypothetically in the first i there i said the damn word in the first <laughs> week on or week of the year i i, I man I'm, I'm on it i'm on man i'm ready <laughs> what you said earlier though about like how steve o'donnell steve Phelps, they're not going to trash rupes rules package publicly when we had steve phelps on the show he said that he likes the cars to have more horsepower he, remember he mm-hmm. said that he's like yeah we'd like it to be like that but this is how we think it should be he was a little honest in that when we had him on the show a few months back so i think it's clear the the leadership of nascar while they may not ever always make the decision that you or even a large portion of the fan base want I don't think it's because they're out of touch. I think it's because they have a lot of people they need to answer to. And unfortunately not everyone's always going to be happy with the results of of their decisions. But um, I think we can all agree after, you know, spending the first nearly 30 minutes talking about the end of that Kansas finish. I think we all, at least the three of us and probably many of the people in the chat agree that the way that race ended is not how NASCAR races at mile and a half should be finishing up going forward. So I think, I think we're all kind of on the same page there. How do we fix it? Not entirely sure, but I I do have, I, I, and I'll, I'll end on this. I won't say any more after this, but I do, I do think there is one pretty big uh, unseen factor that I think if changed could fix a lot of this NASCAR just needs to take control back for itself. You know, you don't see the NFL bending every single rule all the time for TV. You don't see all, all these other racing series changing for TV. Because, I mean, if you look back, the origin of the chase, while they had talked about it for a long time, was brought on by Nextel. And then I think, it, um, you know, Sprint and Monster Energy had talked about the different changes with the playoffs. Like NASCAR, I think NASCAR leadership needs to put their foot down. And I think if they put their foot down and said, this is how it is, we're going to go with it like this. I think a lot more people and entities in the sport would fall in line than a lot of people think would. I think, I think, I honestly think that a lot of people that are sort of being puppet masters in the sport, I, I wouldn't say puppet masters, but are moving pieces around in the sport that aren't in NASCAR's control. I think a lot of them might, you know, might not be going uh, with all their chips or they might be bluffing. Yeah. You, you got to try something. I mean, you look at how NASCAR was built up and this is, you know, their leadership was like this for what, 70, 50, 60 years. Yeah. And ever since, you know, uh, Brian France came in, you know, like everyone keeps treating him as like Voldemort. Um, it, you see that power seemingly going away. And I think that's something this new administration needs to really just get a hold of is like this, there, this is where our line is. You meet us here. You know. Yeah, um, it's just tough when so many of these other places are are paying the bills. I I think that's why NASCAR does it. But I'm with you. It'd be nice if I I hope that's possible. I just don't know that it really is. They're getting stuff cheaper. Maybe 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 having it less reliant on money would get the power back in their hands a little bit. All right. Well, I think in conclusion on this, we all agree this package is big poo poo at the moment. So. <laughs> All right, so we do have a few super chats here. Want to give some thanks to those who donate to the show. We appreciate it so much. First of all, Beast of Metal, nineteen eighty nine. Always see you about every week. It feels like coming in at ten dollars. He says <laughs> that's a good way to start off. The following can, I, sorry, I'm gonna have to do it like WWE. I got two words for you. The following can get ready to suck it. That's what he says. The there pack, you go. the package, the format, spineless. Jim Brands, okay. Darth Kaufman, the two Steves, Joey Stalebred, Logano. Steves. Hendrix Radio Supplier, Gustafson, Voss, and the Georgia Sports Stereotype. Okay, strong words from Beast of Metal there to start off the show. Uh, Urban Alvarado coming in at 999. Appreciate that. With Gen 7 cars testing, NASCAR has to be aggressive in trying these cars in all conditions from cold to warm to ensure how the cars react and slowly how and, and slowly how a bunch of cars will react in these conditions. I agree with that. I think this winter would be a good time to be testing it in the colder conditions because with the current package we have, we've seen it kind of put on the closer racing when the temperatures are colder, but they need to figure out a way to uh, make it not just be close, but also good racing. 
Uh, William Wilson coming in at $5. Uh, no comment, just $5. Appreciate that, William. Uh, Roger Kramer coming in with $5. Appreciate that. Should they look into the push to pass like Indy has to help this package no. of NASCAR? No. Uh, eh, why not? <laughs> I'll be the contrary in there. <laughs> Uh, Beast of Metal coming in again with ten dollars. Appreciate it. My thoughts are, my thoughts regarding the package. Uh, keep two inch splitter and forty three inch radiator pan. Cut spoiler to three to four inches. Devise a rear bumper that evacuates more air from under the rear without messing up alignments. Uh, he's a screw OEMs. Nine hundred horsepower. <laughs> NASCAR nerd comes in with five dollars. With just one win this year, do you guys see Martin Truex going to the championship four? Actually, I do. He will have more than one win. Uh, spoiler alert for a for a pick in the future. Uh, piece of metal, nineteen eighty nine, coming in again with five dollars. Jarrett, you don't watch the NFL close enough. Enforcement is horribly inconsistent, and more than once has seemed to favor big markets like Boston and L A. Well, I'll answer that for him. I'll answer that for him. I, I like to answer for myself here. Uh, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to realize which markets are going to make more money. Yeah, true. The, the, the networks don't need to tell them that the Patriots and the Cowboys or the 49ers are popular. Like, and the NFL has been doing this forever. They were literally were founded by gamblers who fix their own games. Like, let's, you know, I'm, it doesn't take Dang. the head at NBC to say that. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> even uh, I was listening to a – local radio station talking about NFL and stuff and guy was talking about how it used to when he was a kid like even though he didn't live anywhere near Dallas or Pittsburgh he was pretty much forced to like either Dallas or Pittsburgh because those were the two markets that they heavily favored back then you could be like me this year just not watch oh, yeah. but, uh, <laughs> I don't watch because my team sucks but I, I, I watch the best life <laughs> I watch because my team is 5-0 and and they beat the Texans that's not an accomplishment <laughs> But they still beat the Texans. I love how the chat is behind asking me how my team is, and I'm literally like, I don't watch football like anymore. <laughs> like I stopped watching after last year. <laughs> Dang. But uh, my team still beat both your all teams. Okay. Anyways, moving on. NASCAR '88 coming <laughs> no, in with <laughs> coming in with six ninety nine Canadian money. Get rid of Goodyear tires. General <laughs> tires last longer in the races compared to Goodyears. Uh, so General Tires is basically Hoosier, does I Gen- think. Does General Tire or Hoosier have any money, though? Because ultimately Goodyear pays the bills. <laughs> I mean, they got enough to be just an don't, ARCA, so. Just don't start a tire war. I have enough money to start an ARCA team probably these days. Like, like what, you just reach into your pockets. We could probably, three of us combined, start an ARCA car. <laughs> How where that series is at? Uh, Chrome Diesel come in at $2. Uh, appreciate that. Even in the old chase, Logano would win the war. Oh, yeah. I made a video this week about if they use the old one, and it, it seemed to uh, make Reddit mad, which means I'm going to make more of them. Uh, and, it, yeah, Logano won, wins three in a row and then a fourth one like in 28, I think 18. Yeah, if you're a Logano hater, that would, uh, that would not be a good scenario for you. The hypothetical scenario. <laughs> Slapshoe says tire wars are very unprofessional. What's unprofessional about leading people to their death when you don't have to? Next super chat goal, ARCA team funding. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, that's all the super chats. Let's, uh, what else should we do now? Uh, well, I'll, I'll read. All right. Yeah. Well, I'll read really quick about um, oh, the poll the ratings yeah. and then poll. Yeah. yeah. Took the poll. Real so quick. Uh, ratings, they didn't give a comparison to last year when I, cause I found them uh, from I think Kelly Crandall put them up. Uh, you, you know that they're not going up if uh, Adam Stern doesn't tweet about it. So <laughs> it's true. No, it's true. One He's point very positive. Yeah, one point five two rating and two point five million viewers. So that was down from something last year. I don't know what. Um, I'll, do, I'll do some Googling. because they were. Yeah, they were put up like an hour ago, and I was getting some stuff ready before the show, so I didn't get a chance to see. Uh, Reddick and Lejoy's interviews will be up. And the uh, probably around the second half of the show, but uh, poll time because I'm pretty sure people want to look at the poll. So, <laughs> three weeks in a row, nice 6.9 thousand votes in the poll. I asked, What did you think of the 2020 Hollywood Casino 400? 11% of you thought it was great, 45% of you thought it was good, 
Uh, 25% of you thought it was average, 9% said below average, 10% said bad. Now, I keep track of stuff because uh, I'm overboard with that kind of stuff. So looking through uh, for net positivity, this race had a net positivity of 56, which ranks it 49th of 65 races polled. So uh, to put it in perspective, it's behind last year's fall Las Vegas race and ahead of this year's second Pocono race. Well, at least it'd be uh, Pocono. You know, it wasn't yeah. that bad. <laughs> no, <I'm kidding>. uh, <laughs> net negativity for it was 19%, which is actually quite high for this poll. It ranks ninth all time in ties with this year's Coke 600. Um, and then when you compare the net positivity to other Kansas races, it is last by a large margin of the four that have been polled. 2019 spring had 90% positive. Uh, this summer had 79%. Last fall's Kansas had 75%. And then the 56 from this one. So overall, very unfavorably viewed race. Uh, but looking so at some- last year's Kansas ratings were 3.3 million viewers, but it was also a really huge jump last year for this race. So it sounds like this year's 2.5 million is a little bit more in line with where it had been before last year. <laughs> I love looking at the chat and seeing what they have to say about all this stuff. Um, Sorry, I just wanted to jump in with that. No, no, that's good. I, I, I didn't realize it was that much. Like that's yeah. Last year's race apparently got like a twenty five percent increase from twenty eighteen. So I don't know what was going on last year in Kansas. It's huge. I don't know why. <laughs> maybe they thought it was Talladega. Yeah, um, maybe. <laughs> so, what did people think? Well, here's here's a few comments. And uh, if people notice hearted ones, it's because as we were driving home, I was having my dad heart the different ones I wanted to read on the show. <laughs> Uh, and like halfway through, so like, Jesus Christ. And I'm like, now you know what I go through on a weekly basis, <laughs> having to read through them all. I do read them, read them all. Uh, I just do them in different orders for the most part. But uh, Grindcore Ranger 67, NASCAR fans in 2020. At least Harvick and Hamlin didn't win. NASCAR fans in 2021. At least Logano didn't win. Um, Ditech Cup Series says, race wasn't terrible. Had some good moments, but unfortunately the dirty air that was produced hurt the product pretty badly. Rating would be higher if that wasn't the case. Hopefully the next gen fixes this issue. As for the rest of the playoffs, this definitely changes things. Well, with Logano winning, it means that everyone else behind will have to step up their game. Uh, gonna be interesting to see how this plays out. If only, uh, let's if see only, down here. If only Dirty Dan didn't leave his dirty air. <laughs> uh, Motorsport fan 17 leaves the lyrics to Never Gonna Give You Up by Rick Astley. Uh, okay, and he says the good. theme of Logano fans when he wins and trolls the entirety of NASCAR Twitter. Yeah, yeah, I, I have to admit I I enjoyed that. Um, sorry, bro, I can't read your name, but I'll read your comment. Kurt Busch, I need a good finish to stay in contention. His engine. I'm about to end this old man's race. <laughs> uh, let's see what else we got. Uh, Blue Cup says Logano. Yes, I won by not wrecking someone at Kansas. Harvick, so close. Uh, Bowman, I was also there. Kozlowski, I'm in the frame too. Elliot, can you hear me? <laughs> Truex, I exist. Hamlin, my playoff luck is going away again, isn't it? Kurt, frown face. Uh, hey, I, on, it up. On, that note, on that note, it's very crazy looking at the standings that it's realistically possible that Hamlin could still not make the championship for. Uh, uh, he's only 20 yeah. points to the good. Uh, SV001 Gamer says, props to Christopher Bell for running in the top 10 all day. Yes, that, that, I did notice that. That was a good run for him. Uh, White Run Guard says, wouldn't say I'm a Logano fan, but I'd rather see him win than Harvick. Also, that battle in the closing laps was intense. Uh, Pucky Rabbit says, I'm, I seriously don't understand why people hate this package so much. If someone like Elliot or Bowman won this race, almost no one would be complaining. I just don't get it. I really feel like I'm the only one who likes this race. Well, I mean, I, mean, I thought overall. It was cool. He's got a decent point. I'd, I would be a lot happier if Bowman won this one. <laughs> I mean, again, it was a good race, and I thought in the first half for the most part. Just, just the most, the one frustrating part of the pa- about the most frustrating thing about the package was exacerbated at the end. That's why everyone was talking. I think. Uh, Ultimate Twenty Three Dragon leaves a comment saying, "I like how people were praising the package in the first half of the race, and now everyone hates it." Pretty much. There you go. Yeah. I, I think I even tweeted so the package is the best it's looked all season. I think I tweeted that during stage yeah. one. So I, I put. I, I think I tweeted something like, "Is this race as badass as it is here on TV?" And everyone's just like, "Yeah," and that like got all these positive comments. 
Um, Rails and Racing says, I thought that the race was good, but the dirty air was really annoying. I wonder if the uh, if it's a weird way if the step splitter uh, would help eliminate this dirty air problem or at least reduce it. I would like to see them try it out next year, perhaps at the All Star Race. Uh, that name, I don't know how much they can carry from Gen Six to Gen Seven for or next gen for the uh, All um, package, but try whatever in the All Star Race. Uh, Mister Three Hundred says. Rear diffusers are a must now. Uh, Denny Deliver says, everyone on the podcast picks Hamlin. Hamlin, tags wall, and then read more. Uh, me, appreciate the jinx, guys. Keep up the good work. Yeah, we did. Did we all pick Hamlin last week, right? We all, ev- all of us and the chat picked Hamlin. Oh, gosh. Like maybe I need to have Bowman as an underdog and Hamlin as a winner again. <laughs> uh, OBG Gamer says, oh, boy, this might be 2018 all over again. Um, and then Joseph Stalin says, this one's for Danny B. Lyrics to This Ain't the End of Me by White Comic. Uh, let's see. Jacob Hunt, 750 horsepower, please. That's it. Um, I apologize if I've heard your comment and not reading through them. I, I think I'm going to get down to the uh Who's the first the comment? It has to be negative. I would be shocked if it's a positive comment. Yeah, we're doing Joey our Logano win and a, 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 a niffy finish gotta be negative oh really quick uh evan Nekula, i like this one to, to the one person who reads this i hope you enjoyed the finish i read it i did not enjoy the finish <laughs> <laughs> all right, um, all let's, right. Go, let's go ahead and find out what the last comment is all right give your picks now well we got no, we, we got another name oh yeah well i don't need i, I still need a negative s call basically skull random oh that's negative I, mean, I think it's negative too, but I don't, I don't know. I don't know why that was the deciding <laughs> blow. I, I, th- I think they've been the last before, and I think it was negative last time. Everyone's saying negative in there, in the chat. There's one positive. We talking uh, about COVID tests? <laughs> <laughs> Someone said that in the chat. <laughs> Mister Copters has noticed me, sent by. Uh, I noticed you. I'm probably not the one you wanted to be noticed by, though. Uh, so they said. The final comment says, I lost 50 bucks because I bet Logano would lose. It didn't matter who won. I just wanted the 22 to lose again. At least I was able to watch the race in its entirety and not be stuck dumbfounded with pathetic house programming. Wow. I'm going to go negative on that one. Yeah, that was pretty negative. (laughs) That was was a roller coaster of a first comment. Usually it's something like Elliot sucks or something like that. (laughs) that the, The name is literally Skull Random. That was definitely random. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. So thank you, everybody, for voting in the poll. Always fun. And, uh, uh, remember, three, three more of these left this year. Mm-hmm. So on that note, we do have a few more Super Jets that came in. Uh, 2 dollars coming in from Chris St. John. Danny, how's the balls? Sorry, LOL. Hashtag go big blue. The, vo- the balls suck. And I'm going to go watch them <laughs> at Neyland State this weekend play Alabama. They're going to get their butt whooped, and I'm going to enjoy it because I have not seen a game at Neyland Stadium in three years. So I'm going to still have fun. It'll be a me-seeks. Existence is pain. Uh, go, go Vols, but Tide going to whoop our butt. Man, I'm, I'm not even a college football fan, and I know that your team's about to get ass-blasted. Well, yeah. That's gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> He's accepted his fate. If, if, Kentucky, if Kentucky could do that to us, we don't have a prayer. But I feel like this is how the Vols will do. We'll start off so bad at the beginning, and then by the end of the year, we'll do something crazy, like probably beat Florida this year or something. But anyways, Flying Gator coming in with dollar ninety nine. The goal is to finish in the top ten, aka start the race. Oh, that was for our ARCA team. <laughs> I oh, just okay. I that. <laughs> okay, okay, that makes sense. E- Ethan K coming in at 499. Agreed, if we're going with low horsepower, we better get some new manufacturers in here. Otherwise, go full on 800 plus horsepower and give us entertainment value. Yeah, same, sure. same fair enough. Nicholas Gray coming in with $8. Appreciate it. How much will it take for Eric to wear his Kyle Busch costume for next podcast? <laughs> I don't know if I, I still probably have it, but it definitely doesn't fit me anymore. <laughs> maybe it, it might fit me from the waist up. I could maybe fake it for the podcast. You'll be, you'll be like that. Um, what, what's his name? The reporter from ESPN Clayton, when he's like, 
Um, he's got the suit. <laughs> yeah. He's like, mom, I finished my segment. <laughs> <laughs> That's an all time great commercial. Yeah. I- I'll have to see if I still have it. Uh, Blue Cup coming in with a dollar. Nine- commercial. Blue Cup coming in, coming in with a dollar ninety nine. Appreciate it. So they said, Eric, how is that shirt? This shirt? It's a nice shirt. It's actually a uh, flag and anthem shirt. A uh, new supporter of Out of the Groove, which we'll be talking about here very soon. So, yes, Ooh. shout out to them. Uh, then we have Conformation07 coming in at $5. Appreciate it. If Kyle Larson is going to be Chase's teammate at Hendrick, let's hope he never has any radio issues next season. Oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. Oh, yeah. Jer- Jared, did you hear about uh, Chase's radio issues? Yeah, I, I, I saw it on the big screen. Okay. So I know what he's saying. Yeah. Can you? You can't hear me. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's rough. That's funny, but that's, that's rough. A, that, that, I feel so bad for laughing at that, but yeah, just it, it took me a second because I literally was trying to figure out what was going on. But there you go. All right. So, um, what next? Is it? Is, is uh, there... playoff standings. All right, playoff standings. Let's talk about it. Well, we know Joey Logano made it, so I can cross his name out. Um, I got that for right. bucks. <laughs> 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 All right, so the playoff standings right now. In second is Kevin Harvick, plus 41. Denny Hamlin is third, plus 20. Brad Keselowski, plus eight. Then you got the people who are uh, outside of it as I get a giant pop-up on my computer. Uh, Chase Elliott, minus eight. Alex Bowman, minus 27. Martin Truex Jr., minus 31. Kurt Busch in space. <laughs> yeah, he's like 100 back. No, he's like 70 back, right? 73. He, he's the imposter oh. that was already casted out. So I want to yeah, say this really quick. Though. I don't know if it was Kurt Busch or one of his PR people, but I did see that somebody from Ganassi actually came up. There was a kid and his family across from me and my dad. And this guy came up with a Kurt Busch hat, and it looked very official. This dude was bundled up very similarly to Kurt Busch and handed this kid a hat. And I'm like sitting there the whole race. I'm like pondering out into space watching the, the crappy Venice going, was that Kurt Busch and I didn't say anything? Or was that just a PR guy? <laughs> I don't know. Just saying. But if it was Kurt Busch, that was a really cool move. Either way, that's a cool move from the nasty folks if giving fans yeah. uh, some cool merchandise like maybe, that. That's nice. Maybe it was give a, us some hot chocolate. Maybe it was a lot maybe it was Elijah Burke and you just didn't recognize him. You just had a lot of layers on. <laughs> I'll, I'll have to send him a DM and ask him. Uh, but uh, anyway, I'm like I'm looking at these, and I'm it's, sorry, it's, I, I don't see how Harvick misses it. It's it's not over for everyone from third to seventh, really. I mean, I think I think anyone, honestly, <laughs> Bowman and lower. I think Bowman, um, Kurt Busch, and uh, and Truex are in must win territory right now. I think Chase Elliott. What would you say he is seven, eight points out? Yeah, eight points. Yeah, I think he he certainly still has a chance being good at Martinsville, especially. But I I do think it's going to be I think Logano winning because Logano came into the round fifth, and so him winning and vaulting ahead of guys like Hamlin and Harvick, even that's why Hamlin's you know not safe right now. Twenty points. He has another he. I mean, I did one of our super chats earlier, or maybe it was a comment in the poll actually mentioned bad luck for Hamlin in the playoffs. That wasn't bad luck. He just hit them. He just hit the wall like <laughs> at Kansas. He just scraped the wall and cut a tire down. That was yeah. that was on him. So I, I think he only has is it three top ten so far in the seven playoff races. I mean, he and sucked in these playoffs by his twenty twenty standards. So he doesn't he ain't making it Phoenix. It doesn't help that like honestly the the two the tracks that have been the best for both Hamlin and Harvick this year are mile and a half, and it doesn't help that we only just did our second of three of those and neither one of those guys won it this year. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. There was only one five fifty race left on the season and it's Texas, which is a weird track, honestly. Like tires don't wear at Texas. Like it's a weird track. So I don't know. They're definitely Hamlin is not is not safe. Harvick forty one to the good I think is all right, but Hamlin certainly not safe. When you know, looking at Bowman here, his advantage this entire playoffs has been how he can still get stage points like crazy like he's he's always like every racist playoffs it feels like he's been there to get stage points so like i think i said he's like got the fourth most out of any driver during this playoff run which is pretty interesting actually um i mean that could help him close his gap a little bit but they've got to have this circled as their last chance to win because i think if you're looking at him or his teammate elliot's definitely got the advantage at martinsville oh yeah definitely uh i i don't I don't feel confident in Hamlin. I feel like this is a classic no, I, Hamlin choke job. I, I feel like this has been setting up 
to be similar to 2018, and we even got the 2018 champion in there, where you thought it was going to be two guys all year, and it's going to be someone you don't expect. Watch, watch it be someone like Kurt Busch manages. He like wins at uh, Martinsville, and manages to come in there and win it all, and everyone will like it, even though he did exactly what uh, Logano did in 2018. If, if I was Kurt Busch, and I somehow pulled that off, right in the right in the, the championship celebration, I, I'd be like, I retire. <laughs> Screw you, I'm going him. No, but I, I'm looking at it right now, and I honestly think Denny Hamlin's in uh, worse position right now than Brad Keselowski because he's just on a backward slide, it seems like. I mean, yeah, he got the win at, at uh, Talladega, but uh, you had to go below the line to do it. <laughs> Yellow line should be abolished. Uh, I, Damn if anyone's going to move in, I think. If anyone's going to move in, it's going to be Chase, probably. Um, but I can see Truex doing it, too. Um, but, yeah, like I said, Harvick, I think it's good to go. I mean, if I, if I had to revise my picks right now, I'd probably say Joey, Kevin. I still think Hamlin will. And then probably Brad Keselowski. Like, I'll just move Truex out of there. Yeah. I, I think that the final four is right now is the most likely of what I, it'll be. Unless, unless someone surprises me this weekend, uh, I think – the only two I'm considering being in the final spot is either Han- no, sorry, is either uh, Truex or Elliott. I think it's really interesting at Martinsville. Well, Texas is going to be a wild card a little bit just because of how weird of a track it is. I mean, we had Reddick and Dylan one two there earlier this year, but Martinsville is a track that Chase Elliott, Martin Truex Jr. are both really good at. Also, Denny Hamlin, and those are three drivers that could be right there. Will likely all be right there on the cut line by the time we get there. So. Um, I think Martinsville is going to be an extremely interesting race, especially towards the end. Yeah. I, I wish I could go, uh, but I'll just say it now, like, you know, I was going to have a lightning round, but it'll be a thousand fans there. And I think there'll be some very, very lucky fans. You know, <laughs> that's going to be a good show. I didn't really notice until I just looked it up, but uh, you know, I'm, I'm saying that the 88 has just this weekend, but theoretically, they're not looking that bad for Martinsville. They actually finished sixth earlier this year. There, gonna need a clutch, clutch win probably. But yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, and and he got a he got a seventh there in twenty eighteen. So not too bad for this track actually. Yeah, it's just six and sevens. I don't think that cuts it, especially it's, in position two. That that's, that's not enough. It's like if it, if it, it were Chase Elliott, I'd say yes because he's close enough. It's like the difference of playoff wins is showing for Bowman because he's done good in, in stage points this playoffs, but he had nothing to help him. I just think it's crazy. Oh. He finished, Bowman came into the playoffs 21 out, I think, or maybe it was even less than that. And he finished third, third at Kansas, and he's now 27 back. Well, <laughs> like, I, if, crazy. if Logano hadn't won, I think it would have been a more doable number. Like He would have been like the teens, I think. Sure. Oh, they were showing yeah. it at the race because um, they have like video boards on uh, each side of the front stretch. And before Logano took the lead, like, it was a tight battle. I mean, uh, you know, Denny Hamlin was in a lot better spot. And and Kevin Harvick basically, like, he he would need to just start and not wreck at Texas to be locked in. But, I mean, it was was pretty close. And then that happened. A few people had some issues. And it ain't so close now. If if Hamlin somehow blew, blew a motor this weekend at Texas, things are wide open in that playoffs now. Yeah. I mean, remember though, that Martinsville is one of his best tracks. Like my, when's the last, I mean, time, I, he, when's the last time he won at Martinsville? Oh, that's a good, good question. That's a good question. I mean, he has like, he has like six wins there, right? For his career or something like that. Right. <laughs> now I'm going to look it up just cause I want to know. Yeah. All right. Me, I don't, I don't, I can't remember his last win. I'm not off the top of my head. I'll, uh, I'll look it up real quick. Someone will someone in the chat. 2015 spring? Is that what people are saying? Has it really been that long? He does have like six or wins there, right? Well, see, he won, in two, he won, I think, what, 2009, 2010. He won. Did he win both of them in 2010? I have no uh, idea. I am, I am going to look his, this up. His last win at Martinsville came in March of 2015. Okay. That's if, what if, saying. Since, if, if he swapped then, 2010, got 2009 and 2015, that right there is four. One, two, three. Two thousand eight spring was his five. first. So he's five. D- five. Yeah, he has five wins. D- not d- six. Five. D- do you guys know where Denny Hamlin finished in Martinsville earlier this year? I know it was twenty fourth. Twenty fourth. 
I don't remember what happened. Oh, yeah, that was the race where he started out terrible and Corey LaJoy passed him. After yeah, he just straight up did <laughs> bad. I forgot about that. Oh, gosh, if they come back I mean, with that same setup. I don't think they will. I mean, you've seen – I mean, there's been times before that drivers who have regularly dominated places just show up and, and stink to high heaven. I mean, you yeah. look, there's been races where Jeff Gordon just looks awful at a road course or like Dale Jr., has sucked at a plate track. I think uh, Jimmy Johnson. There's races he did terrible at Charlotte. So I think the spring, I, I'm not going to count him out. Yeah, I think the spring Bristol race of this year. That was how Kyle Busch was. He was never a factor in that one. But then he almost yeah. won the All Star race and almost won a night race. <laughs> that was there for both of them, and he came up. He, oh, he came up second in both those. Cool. Yep, he did. Yeah, uh, there's Mr. Copper put in the chat. Uh, Copter, I should say, put in the chat. Uh, Gordon, Chicagoland, 2005. Anyone? Yeah, it was a bad day for him. Um, but yeah, I, that, that, that's my take. I don't know if the guy anything else to add. I think we hit on that it. Or, uh, uh, I think so before we probably we, hit one more. Well, we got some silly season news to talk about. That's us. I, I'm I'm asking which one. I mean, because let, let, I'm, I'm. Let's just start with the big band aid. Let's talk about Larson is cleared by NASCAR. Yeah, so Kyle Larson is reinstated effective January 1st. That's uh, – no one it, saw that coming. It's more of a matter of what's his car number at this point because we – every it's like the worst five. secret in the world where he's, where's he going. Five. Uh, uh, he's going to Hendrick. Five, five would be interesting. Yeah, I'm a little so, surprised they made the announcement this soon. I thought they'd wait until after the season. But maybe with all the negative discussion think, around the rules package, they thought, all right, let's cover that up with Larson news this week. I think it's, 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 it's more like, yes, it would have made sense to do it later, but I think realistically Hendrick is looking to make this announcement as soon as both Chase and Alex are out of the playoffs, and that could be soon. It could be a little later. They they could want to wait until a few weeks after one of them theoretically wins a championship. So I think they're gonna. I think Hendrick is gonna wait until the season is over, especially if both their drivers were eliminated right now. Then maybe they would they do the announcement now. But I think they're gonna wait at least until and the I, week I think after that's, Phoenix. That's probably the reason they waited so long with the Bowman forty eight news because they wanted to let him focus on doing as good as he could. Yeah. Yeah. Perhaps. Yeah, but I, I see him go. I, I think there's there's been some rumors going around. I know I think NASCAR rumor mill puts up now. They've been pretty accurate. Uh, I'm not going to take that the word as gospel, but they've been pretty accurate. And mm-hmm. it, it seems like all signs are pointing towards he'll be in the five. We all knew he'd be at Hendrick. I think he'll do fairly well. I think he'll if he makes a round of 12, I think that should be an expected start at least because I, I think he can perform on the level at, of Alex Bowman. And and that's not a diss at Bowman. I think that's a good level to be I mean, that's, running at. That's, that's a that's a round of eight drivers. So, well, and I, I, th- I I think you know Bowman's expected to make a round of twelve. Like he's expected to make it at least that far. Every year, round since of eight Johnny is Hendrick. Good. Every year since Jordan yeah. Hendrick, he's been there. So, yeah, round of eight is you know stepping it up. And I I think so. I think the baseline should be round of twelve. If he I think if he messes the playoffs, it either means that there was a lot more winners and just some good drivers got kept out. Or it means that, you know, he, he'll need some work to do. I mean, he's been out of the As, car for almost a year. Aside from Dirk Bristol, I'm not expecting him to come out and just tear it up, you know. No, I don't think he'll dominate right off the bat. I think no practice or qualifying for a lot of races next year is going to it's going to take him a while to get back in the groove. We don't know who his crew chief would be, uh, if it'll be Cliff Daniels, if it'll be somebody else. You know, we don't know yet. So I, there's still a lot of questions I'd have. But yeah, I'd expect Larson to make the playoffs next year. I think if he doesn't, that's a disappointment. Hopefully, a win or two. I think is what the teams are hoping for. Yeah. Uh, if that that's really. It. It. I was just surprised. That, I'm just surprised they announced it this early, but that was really the only surprising thing. We all, we, I think, we all yeah. knew Larson was going to get reinstated before 2021. Oh yeah, definitely. So we've hit. It's basically eight o'clock. Do you want me to? You want to go through whatever super chats there have been, and then we go to uh, lightning round? Yeah, let me see if there's been any new super chats. Um... By the way, we have. Oh well, it's just under right now. Oh, now it's back over. We have 405 people watching right now. Click that like button. We're only at 154 likes. Come on, y'all. We yeah, gotta get is up this. There. We yeah. have, uh, yeah, we need more likes than that. Uh, we have Ross Boss coming in at dollar ninety nine. Uh, the message was retracted, but I think he gave another one. Uh, Ross Boss dollar ninety nine. Uh, can you be a guest in my new motorsports podcast? Um, hit us up on Twitter sometime. Uh, mm-hmm. Chris Cahill coming in with two Canadian dollars. Appreciate that. Can I ask you guys a trivia question? Well, I would answer it. 
If there was a trip, was that a trivia question? Uh, yes, you can ask one. <laughs> ding ding, correct. Uh, for those asking in the chat, uh, the interviews will be. Uh, what was that, Eric? I have a bell. <laughs> <laughs> The interviews will be after the lightning round, so they're right around the corner. So, so. guys. Sorry, I'm just driving you crazy now. <laughs> it's the interview. We should make that the interview, Bill. Lightning round. <laughs> oh, gosh. We are under ice. Get up for day 15. <laughs> <laughs> okay, anyway, 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 so, guys, we are officially under a severe thunderstorm warning. It's the lightning round. Oh, oh. Jarrett's dead. Oh, is this right? Is this where I get killed? Oh. Ah! Uh, no! Uh, I have so much to live for! Gotta, gotta. All right, so anyway, uh, yes, the we, lightning round. We, we've been electrocuted. <sighs> Woohoo! Yeah, all right, so lightning round. Uh, there's, a, there's a lot of lightning this week. Uh, so looking at here, uh, this one was actually the most recent one of, um, of the points that I've had on the list. Uh, Dave Moody brought this up. Eric Jones brings no sponsorship money to RPM. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, I'm going to bring this up every week for the rest of the year. For those of you who might be new, haven't watched for a while, whatever, uh, we're on Spotify. Uh, just look up NASCAR Weekly Podcast and we'll show up. Uh, this episode will probably be up, I'd say, by tomorrow morning. Uh, so there's that. Uh, let's see. Levine Family Racing is running their 2011 scheme, a throwback scheme that was designed by Sam Bass at Texas this weekend. And 13, 14 year old me is getting hit right in the feels looking at that one. It looks cool, uh, yeah. It, it does. I, I'm, I'm, with I with Procore cool. as a sponsor. Yeah. Um, by the way, Dalton Good in the chat, just stay, stay at least for the lightning round because trust me, man, I think you'll like one of the points in here. Um, so, David Land. One of the guests we'll have on next week uh, tweeted this out, and you know he's had he has some insiders in in the motorsports community. Uh, was saying the rumor is Road Atlanta for Xfinity in 2021, possibly to Cup, but that's pending if they get their new garages uh, built. So I, I don't take that for what it's worth, but that sounds like something that would be uh, interesting. I'm I'm just wondering what Atlanta Motor Speedway would say about it. Um. Tony Stewart, according to Dustin Albino, Tony Stewart credits Ford for the quality of its driver development program, says, unlike another OEM that, quote, ruins drivers' careers because they have nowhere to go and come. I miss smoke. Is, is, is that a certain OEM that I used to sell cars for? Is that uh, a certain yes. OEM that I currently drive and is on my driveway? <laughs> <laughs> same here. Eric, it's ruining your career. You have nowhere to oh, go with it. No. <laughs> No wonder I got such a good deal. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we'll talk a bit about uh, more in depth about this later. But uh, Haley Deegan, according to Bob Pachris, will do some IMSA next month uh, at Laguna Seca and Sebring. And no more NASCAR events until trucks next year, which I find that kind of interesting. Um, but, yes, yeah, so that's something there. Uh, <laughs> this one is the weirdest, weirdest one I think I ever will say on this. Norm Benning has a Twitch account and he streams iRacing on it. That's freaking awesome. No, he streams Among Us, remember? He streams Among Us. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. He'll, he'll stream Among he Us. Fortnite. Yeah. <laughs> hey, guys, this is Norm. We're back with Fortnite. Bro, <laughs> we are a... back at it with another live stream. <laughs> he becomes another Madden streamer. <laughs> no, um, no, no, now I just want to see Norm Benning back at it again. <laughs> I want to see Norm Benning. Smash that like button. Chats. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay, so Noah Sweet uh, designed the ally scheme for this weekend, and uh, he said that the lightning on the side of the scheme, if, if you guys have seen it in the chat or those listening have seen it, uh, the lightning on the side is both an homage to Jimmy Johnson's first major paint scheme as well as an homage to Lightning McQueen, apparently. So that's pretty hmm. cool, but good for Noah. Uh, I, thought, I, 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 I thought it was a tribute to our uh, infamous lightning round here at the NASCAR Weekly Podcast. I thought we had something going on. <sighs> How could I forget? How could I forget? Uh, congratulations to Dale Earnhardt Jr. and Amy Earnhardt on the birth of their second child, Nicole Earnhardt. So, Nicole Lorraine. Be a, uh, oh, oh, that's that's uh, her middle name? L yep, Lorraine. Cool. Um, so Adam Stern tweeted this out. Apparently NASCAR's ratings – compared to uh, other leagues is actually not that bad. I think that, I mean, this was before Kansas, so it could be worse, but it said it was down by 1%. 
Uh, the next closest one is the NFL is down 13%. And the only ones that are up are a little bit for the PGA, the WNBA, and the PGA Tour. Now, I don't know about the PGA Tour, but seeing how they probably only added five viewers to the WNBA, uh, you know, I, I can understand a 15% jump. Uh, plus, there's nothing else on. So. Yeah. yeah, I think NASCAR got a big boost there just by being the first one of the first major sports back. I'm sure that definitely helped. But yeah, things just got super cluttered, uh, you know, starting like in August, July, August, and especially September. Things just, I mean, there's the NBA playoffs, the NHL playoffs, the MLB playoffs, and the start of the NFL season on basically the exact same time. Like that's, mm-hmm. well, the Indy 500 at the same time. Like there's, oh my God, there's just so much going on. Uh, Justin Haley is returning to colleague in 2021, as is Michael McDowell returning to the number 34 next year. AJ Allmendinger, that one coming. AJ Allmendinger will drive the number 11 in 2021. And rumors, uh, well, actually, you know what? I'll save this one for when the interview pops up. There's a rumor about one of our interviewees. Uh, MJ is what? eyeing the 23 trademark in NASCAR, and the name of the team, at least it's rumored right now, is 23XI Racing. Uh, which might seem like a weird name until you look and see that it basically is twenty three eleven racing. Wait, what was that news you said cool. about I. Jalmendinger? Drive, I think it's to drive the eleven in twenty twenty one for the Xfinity series. That's what Justin Haley's driving. Oh, then sixteen. I don't know. They're, that I got to it. They're probably I, I, wrong. I don't think it's been confirmed yet. But in that announcement that they did for College Racing, uh, AJ was a big part of. It. He teased it like they teased it to make it look like it might have been the it might have been the ten. I don't know. They teased but, it to look like AJ was going to replace Justin in the eleven because it was AJ's idea. But then they blatantly put the ten car in the background to make even though they haven't announced anything with AJ, it looks like he's driving a ten car. It probably is that. Uh, must be real. All those numbers look the same to me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> uh, anyway, let's see, we got about three or four other things. Uh, Root Insurance uh, might be having something coming up with Bubba Wallace, it seems. Looks uh, like more than might. Yeah, that, that, I was just trying to be a little bit like that. Uh, Sports Business Notebook says that uh, Atlanta Motor Speedway is going to go completely cashless next year. So your, your cash is meaningless with them. Um, according to Bob Pockers, Justin Mark's track house team is going to be embedded in the RCR team, uh, and it'll be treated like a third RCR car. Don't expect any expansion cars with a third team under the RCR banner because of this. Uh, and then I think one second, I like to, to, uh, cross these out so I don't read over them later because I've had a bad history of doing that. Uh, but the last one, it's just, I think the funniest one of the lightning round uh dalton i hope you're watching right now because i am praising you here dalton good trolled tj majors and it was beautiful absolutely beautiful what happened so so on door bumper queer they're going over like people's tweets and stuff and they find dalton uh dalton goods there's dalton and and dalton tweets imagine liking joey legano which was i'm not giving an opinion one way or the other on this i just think it's it's funny um and it got under tj major's skin he went on for a good minute like saying and how then, it's like well, I, you know what i got wins and championships i think dalton like responded to it with like a picture of kyle bush with two championship trophies <laughs> <laughs> i was like this is this is great so dalton I, I see you in the chat man why was he so focused on just a tweet one tweet i don't know i, I don't know when you got the like I, TJ must have here, woke up on the wrong side of the bed. Here's the thing about you know us on the internet, like people people might say like, oh, those, well, those guys don't matter. Whatever they say doesn't matter. Apparently, it matters enough if if people in the industry can still focus on it. Uh, anyway, that's the uh, that's the lightning round. Yep, that's the lightning round. We got everything covered. Actually, we got this entire back page covered. Woo-hoo! All right. Well, with that being said, we I just got retweeted by a Mr. Tyler Reddick telling people to come check out the show. So I think that might be a good time for us to say, ladies and gentlemen, we are going to be welcomed by two pre-recorded segments of tonight's show with interviews from Corey LaJoy and Tyler Reddick. Please enjoy the show. We will see you at the conclusion.
Hey there, fans of the NASCAR Wiki Podcast. This is Danny B. Hope you guys are enjoying the show so far. Now, please stay tuned. We are welcomed at this time by a NASCAR driver looking for his next ride for next year. Currently driving number 32 car for Go Fast Racing. Please help us welcome Corey LaJoy to the NASCAR Wiki Podcast. Enjoy the interview. Hey guys, please welcome to the show Corey LaJoy, driver number 32 for Go Fast Racing this year. And Corey, that's where you're at at the moment. I guess the first thing a lot of people are on the show are probably wondering, you know, do you have any idea what it might be in store for 2021 at this time? Yeah, I got a pretty good idea. Um, can't say yet, though. Should know more later this week. Should have some pen to paper. But uh, we're working on some pretty good stuff. Um, something a little more competitive than where I'm at now and could be good for several years to come. So um, hopefully I can announce up here soon, but can't really, you, you can't uh, – can't get it out of me today. Not well. That's a good try. <laughs> yeah, well, you got to try. Well, I've heard you say on, on your show, Sunday Money, that uh, there's a possibility that maybe an Xfinity Series deal is, is on is on the horizon as well, maybe a part-time thing. Can you expand on that? Are you having multiple conversations, or is it really focused on just one team right now? Yeah, so right now, I mean, all the not all the eggs in the, are in the Cup Series basket, but um, I'm, I'm really excited about what the Cup deal is going to pan out to be competitively as well as off the track a lot of stuff to build on so i kind of want to ask i know you talk about wanting a more competitive ride but what else are you looking for with the team just overall whether it's you know in front of the world or behind the scenes yeah just to work with a group that has a goal um you know we can get incrementally better with uh to build on i could bring my partners that have supported me for the last couple of years like schluter systems and uh bill bar amongst some others um and and try to continue to build on the racetrack as well as just build the return for those partners that have been so good to us uh, for the last couple of years. So, um, you know, working people is just as important as equipment. And I think, uh, you know, it's hard to find the right group of ownership that really sees uh, the value of somebody that, you know, can bring some, oh, shoot. But, I mean, all, yeah, I mean, pers- personnel is important, man. People that, ownership group that sees the value of what I can bring uh, behind the wheel as well as off the track uh, hopefully is valuable and where the people I'm talking to, the people who I'll drive before next year definitely sees that value. Well, uh, Corey, I think we're done trying to get anything out of you about next year. Let's talk about this year, though. It's been quite an emotional racing season for everyone this year. You started off 2020, had a you know strong run at Daytona 500. We all know what happened in the finish, but uh, – you know, what has this year been like for you, like, like the ups and downs? I mean, to be honest, we've haven't met a lot of expectations of mine anyways. We've had a lot of mechanical failures that were very preventable. Um, and just we leave, we've left a lot of points on the table we shouldn't have. And uh, we've had a de- couple of decent runs, but, um, you know, I, I haven't been uh, particularly happy with with – how we've run speed wise, but, um, you know, we, we got those Stuart Haas cars that they drive a lot better and they, they handle better in traffic and all that sort of stuff. But, it, you know, it wasn't a whole lot of an alliance, especially with, a you know, we're on the lower tier engine program. So you could get a faster carriage, but if you still got the same old horse pulling, I think it's only going to go so fast. So, um, we've had an a motor a couple of times and it's been a, we finished 16th and 18th and, you know, I think we've only had it two or three times, and it's been worth eight to ten spots every time. So when we put the other engine that's affordable back in, it doesn't doesn't bode well for a whole lot of speed on the racetrack. So been dealing with that, been dealing with mechanical issues. You know, it hasn't really been a lot of you know a lot of uh, to let, hang our hat on it at least. So um, onwards and upwards, I guess. Well, I, I want to ask you a little bit more about the NASCAR free agency in general, but how do you think the pandemic has changed free agency this season? Obviously, the Vine family racing closing down, you know, that's an obvious kind of repercussion of it. But like beyond that, as a driver looking for a ride, do you feel like this has changed what owners are looking for and what what deals drivers are able to get? Good question. Um, I mean, the free agency deal continues to change every year. You know, the, the cost is ramping up and the, and the return to the teams doesn't uh, doesn't follow that same trajectory. So for legitimately, if it wasn't for Schluter Systems and some other companies that invested in me and believed in me and continue to, uh, you know, grow 
uh, with me, if you will. You know, they they obviously see the return and the value in, in NASCAR as a, as a whole, but also the value of me as being one of their products and, and, and companies ambassadors. So if it wasn't for those guys, I would be welding seats because honestly, it's like the first or second question that they ask is how much money you got to bring to the table uh, because the difference in you know one or two spots you might i might be able to get behind the wheel versus somebody else doesn't that way you have a couple hundred thousand or a million dollars somebody else might be able to bring so it certainly doesn't get any easier but i've been lucky to, to work with some some good teams and i've run well enough to show what i'm capable of doing when i get the right opportunity for a team to uh to build with me and build a solid program so, you know, we talked a bit about free agency and what's coming up next year, but there's still three races to go this year. What's your goal with the team with GoFest to finish off the season? What's the biggest goal so far? I mean, hell, I'd be happy just not to break another fuel pump. We've broken about seven of them, had about nine fuel-related issues. So if we can get through these next three races and not have any issues, I'd be happy. Uh, you know, we more or less know where we're going to finish in points. We're going to finish it's either 29th or 30th. I think it's 29th. Um, we can't catch anybody. We can't really give any up without catastrophic failure. So, um, you know, we, we've always ran well at Martinsville. It's one of my best cup tracks uh, statistically. And, you know, you're not as reliant on your equipment there at Martinsville. You can kind of get your elbows up and make something happen. So, you know, looking for a solid run there. We were running well at Phoenix. We had some break issues earlier in the year. So we'll try to close the season off strong there. Um but really and truly, start uh, start working towards next year and figuring out how to uh, start putting the pieces of the puzzle together and continue to get better. Well, certainly sounds like good goals to be planning for. And, uh, well, Corey, this is a fan-driven show, so we do want to incorporate our fans into the show as well. And Jarrett actually has some fan questions for you, and we'll start with Jarrett on those. All right, so first one comes from uh, just EZ, that's all his name is on Twitter, says uh, he wants to know what your favorite pre- and post-race meal is. Yeah. I've been on a pretty big oven pizza kick, so whenever I land, I stay oven pizza or Domino's pizza. So if I land, like I landed the other night from Kansas at about 9 o'clock, so I land and I'll get open my Domino's app and I'll order a thin uh, pepperoni and banana peppers pizza. Up. And then by the time I drive back towards the house, I'll stop in and pick it up and have usually a single or double or whiskey and sit there and eat a crush a large pizza and not feel <laughs> bad about it whatsoever. On that note, I want to ask, oh, this is a big debate on NASCAR Twitter for some, what is it that makes a pizza? Uh, I think the sauce. I'm a big sauce guy. So it's, you got to have, a, you gotta have a, a good sauce if you really want to sell it. That. I, I got I to gotta add into this because I'm fr- around the Chicago area. So thin crust or, uh, or deep crust? I'm a thin crust guy because I don't, I don't feel like – I don't like feeling like I ate a loaf of bread <laughs> after I eat a piece of pizza, especially if you want to eat the whole thing because you can't get a pizza and not eat the whole thing. Like, so I feel a little bit better about myself. It's a thin crust pizza versus a thick crust yeah, a fin crust, you can eat that. A deep dish, you got to have one slice of sheriff, everybody. It eats you. Uh, oh, yeah. Unless, unless you're from uh, the Chicago area or surrounding areas. Uh, okay, so Matthew on Twitter asks, uh, what was it like having your father, Randy, as an influence on your racing career growing up? Yeah, I mean, it's, it's probably not exactly what people thought. You know, he was super tough on me growing up, which I'm sure a lot of, a lot of parents in sports are. But, you know, I'm, I'm – one hand, I really appreciate it because he kind of uh, really allowed me to do what I, you know, push me to the level to get to where I'm at with his connections and, and help. And, you know, he knew the level of time commitment that it took to be the highest level. And I knew that from a young age. So it wasn't a surprise when I got there. So, you know, he's definitely my biggest fan. He's also my biggest critic, still is. So, I definitely appreciate it sometimes. Sometimes it pushes my buttons, but generally speaking, uh, he's definitely a good ally to have on my side for sure. And then our last uh, fan question is from someone called Sulfurous on YouTube. I uh, asked, what was the conversation like with Old Spice to plaster your face on the hood of the 32 Mustang? Yeah, that was a uh, that was a team deal. I was probably the last one to know. I saw the rendering and I was like, oh my God, is this a joke? 
and it was a it was a joke as much as it was serious apparently so so they, they got a lot of attention and they definitely uh they definitely earned back way more than what they paid for so that was cool to be able to really kicked off that 32 relationship with a bang and uh it definitely gets people still talking about it who knows i might uh i i i hope I just hope that somebody doesn't do a throwback car and bring that scheme back. That's all. I'm, that's all. I'm asking. <laughs> oh, that that wouldn't that be something they they want to do a really good throwback to whatever age you are at that point. Then try to do the throwback. <laughs> yeah, that that actually. Who knows? Hopefully, I'm still around in the next ten or ten or twelve years, still driving. But uh, who knows where it ends up? I'm I'm excited. I got a lot of good stuff in the works, and hopefully, it all starts panning out here in the next week or two, and we can get it out there for everybody to everybody here all right well Corey, we certainly appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule to talk with us today and uh good luck the rest of the season you only got three more races to go this year but give it all you got and like you said hopefully there's uh no more no more issues there yeah thanks uh and i you know i don't want to hammer on that issue but that was definitely the thorn in our side this year um we we it's a bug that we couldn't get rid of unfortunately but um all right we'll close the year out strong with a couple good runs to martin so hopefully Texas and Phoenix this weekend. We or we have Texas this weekend with the Schluter Systems Mustang. So try to uh, pull the belts tight and say where we land. Sounds like a good plan. Well, Corey, you take care, man. Thanks, guys. Wow, that was something. Thanks again to Corey LaJoy for coming on the show today. And now we're not done. We have another NASCAR Cup Series driver joining us. Please welcome. Welcome eight for Richard Childress Racing, Tyler Reddick, as he joins the NASCAR Rookie Podcast to discuss what's been going on his season and perhaps a few other topics. Enjoy the interview. Hey guys, welcome back. We did promise you a second driver today, and we are welcomed by the current driver number eight for Richard Childress Racing, and he is a two-time NASCAR Xfinity Series champion. Please welcome Tyler Reddick. Tyler, how's it going, man? It's going good, and actually, I see there in your background, you got the got the two car hanging out there underneath the North Wilkesboro sign. So that's hey, really cool. Hey, I I can't hide that thing. I was I was there to watch you win that one, so I got to have it on display. So it's a uh, f- fun fact. Like after, as soon as you were like doing your burnouts, uh, I hated that I couldn't stay around too much longer because me and my wife had tickets to the Miami Heat game, so we didn't get a chance to stay around and check out a lot of the celebrations. I think J- Jarrett and Eric got to. Yeah, it, I, I was right up on the wall and maybe, uh, well, maybe past the wall. We'll not say that I was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> just they were just say you were. Where you, I was. I was close. I was close. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, Tyler, we appreciate you being on. And uh, first of all, just want to ask you know this has been a phenomenal rookie season for you, and we're getting ready to go to Texas Motor Speedway where you got second place earlier this year. So what's it like going back to a track where you had such a good run last time? Uh, good and bad. I've I've actually I feel like I've had a, a, a quite a few runner up finishes at Texas uh, throughout my career already, which is a good thing. I mean, we're right there. One one different decision, even in the in the closing laps of the race, and and maybe we have a couple wins. But uh, it's been a good track for me, even since it was, you know, repaved. And I mean, it's essentially been reconfigured with the less banking in one and two. So um, it's two different tracks. They're not even comparable. Um, but it seems like, uh, we've been able to put races together there, which is important. And, uh, you know, we ran second there, like you guys mentioned, and it was a big day for RCR Austin getting the win, obviously. And we were able to come second. It it meant a lot for everyone in this company, uh, especially with how hard this year has been. So yeah, it was, it always is disappointing to run second. Um, but Hey, at least it was Austin that was able to go to victory lane and we're able to pull that one too off. And talking about this season for RCR, I feel like y'all have had a bit of a resurgence this year. Both of your your cars are in the top 20 in points. Austin obviously made the playoffs with that win. Um, and, and you've had a great rookie season, I'd say. What has been the secret to to RCR's kind of kind of gain this season? Well, this this package can be very confusing. Um, you've got to kind of pick a, a direction and just and believe in it and go. Uh, you know, we saw early in the year uh, with, with this, when this package kind of debuted in a sense uh you know atlanta and all these tracks you know the rcr camp was bringing speedway cars and super trimmed out and uh weren't able to make it work so it it was just it took them a while to find it and it it definitely hurt their year last year um but this year randall and myself uh burnett uh you know we we had that relationship from from our xfinity year we had some players that, that jumped up from the xfinity side with us we had some new additions that had been on the cup side from the last year so we just put together a really good team on the eight side, and that really helped. 
Uh, you know, Justin Alexand- Alexander is back with, with Austin again. So it's just good people in the right spots um, and putting our heads together and, and just carrying out, you know, our plans. And whether they work or not, um, you know, it, you would want them to work. But the good thing is through our failures, we're, we're finding um, we're finding why we failed. And that's always a good thing. You never want to leave the racetrack being terrible and then scratching your head and never understanding why. So they've all been lessons learned up to this point, And we've come a long way even from just that that Texas race where we ran one too. So I'm excited for the opportunity. So kind of building off that, what's the atmosphere and kind of outlook for RCR for the last three races of this year and then also heading into 2021? Well, uh, you know, I guess I can't necessarily speak for Austin, but he's at, he's now out of the playoffs too. And I think for us, it's about just it, more than, it's more than about building momentum. It's about continuing to, to build the notebook uh, and, and understand what we need to work on throughout the off season. So we have three more opportunities to, to win. We have three more opportunities to, to lose. We have three more opportunities to just, just learn. And whether we win, lose, whatever, we're going to learn something uh, these last three races that are going to be a benefit rolling into the next year. So we just going to absorb every information we can pay attention to all the little details that, um, that, that lead to some of these, these cars and these teams to having speed to uh, making proper decision, good decisions on pit road just little details that add up to these these victories because we've seen, um, especially with this new car, this new body aero package, uh, the drivers have adapted. They've changed a lot in the last year or so. And uh, it's just really changed the way we race and the game of it. I mean, you're, all the little minor details mean so much. You can't afford these mistakes. So you have to really be perfect all day long, whether that's you in the car or the entire team. So. Like I said, those details will get us there. Now, Tyler, next year, uh, RCR, it was announced later this year, they're going to be kind of merging, well, not really merging, with uh, Hendrick Motorsports to kind of produce some added power to Chevrolet, which is kind of ironic considering the fact that you were once with Junior Motorsports, uh, won a championship for them, then you switched over to Richard Childress Racing, won a championship there, and ultimately it definitely gave you the best direction to go to the Cup Series. So for it to kind of now come full circle to be kind of back running, you know, similar equipment that both of you guys are going to be sharing next year. How does that maybe help lead into more confidence going into next year? Uh, you know, definitely. I feel like there's been tracks where, uh, you know, us as RCR, we've been, we've been better than the, than Hendrick. And I feel like there's tracks that Hendrick's been better than us too. So um, I hopefully, you know, it's, it's a great partnership and it works um, as intended and we're, pick up uh you know where we lack in, in all that in all those different areas that that aren't our strengths so i'm excited for it i've obviously i've had the the, the pleasure of running both engines so i kind of understand what the differences are already so uh, we'll just i'm excited to see what that means going going forward obviously the the main goal of it is to just more power be better be more efficient and uh hopefully we can work work well together we already do essentially for the most part we, we share a lot uh with when we when we switch to the Chevy Z L one one L E this year, uh, you know, we're kinda all have our heads together anyways, working on the aero stuff and little details that can help all of us in general. So I think it'll be good for all of us. So first year in the Cup series for you, I wanna ask what specifically would you say has been the hardest thing to adjust to in the NASCAR Cup series? Well that's tough. I feel like there's two that are pretty equally pretty pretty equally difficult. Um, the one that was the big, big issue at first for me was the pit road stuff and maximizing that and understanding that, you know, running it 49 miles an hour was good on the Xfinity side, but on the cup side, I mean, you're, I think you're one mile an hour off the entire down, entire way down pit road cost you, I couldn't tell you, but it cost you enough time to lose two, three, four spots. So that's, that was very important to maximize to the full potential. You can't speed, obviously, because it, it can almost kill your day, but you definitely can't be slow on pit road. The other one, as much as I hate to say it, is um, not racing hard. Um, obviously, we race side by side. We do all these things, right? Um, but it's, it's, you have to be very strategic. You just can't take um, every single run you get necessarily to the bottom and um, expect it to work. you got to work together with other drivers. you got to know when to jump in line to the top or in the, the groove with the more cars and get that run down the straightaway and then maybe jump out of line. Uh, you just gotta be very strategic. You gotta think ahead. If you dive bottom of three wide off of uh, turn four, 
you know, you think, oh, I'm going to get these guys in the Xfinity car. Yeah, you probably would. You have the momentum kind of going your way, but these cars are have so much drag and, and not a lot of not a lot of horsepower. You've just got to really think ahead in those situations because oftentimes you make that move, you, you may gain one or two spots off the corner and you're going to end up losing six, seven, eight, uh, and that's very costly. So that's the other one. So I, I feel like I, I have to ask this one. Uh, you know, you've been learning different things throughout the year, but I have to ask what happened at uh, Homestead there on the last lap? Were you just two in the moment or? <laughs> yeah, I, I uh, it was, it was a good day for us, but I was ultimately extremely disappointed because I know that there was one restart there that I kind of mess with, was messing with Joey Logano as we, as I think a, a lot of people know that he's, he's really good at racing out the mirror. Some people that can be frustrating, but I have a lot of appreciation for it because I love to do it too at the super speedways and it tracks where I can. Um, but at Homestead, he, he got me really good and I didn't pass him there. I didn't get the lead. Just, I just felt like ultimately there was one or two situations where I could have done better and I'd failed. So I was kind of ready for the race to be over and um, be done with. I kind of just made one more attempt at Ryan in three and four. And I thought that was coming. He would have a, not, not hoping a, he would have an issue, but in case he did, I would beat him back to the line. So I thought that was it for some reason, even with people in my ear telling me, all right, one to go is a good race, blah, blah, blah. Then I start talking and Randall's melting down, you know, freaking out. Everyone's freaking out. And I can't hear them because I'm talking. So, all right. So before we go over to some fan questions, I did want to bring up this. We, uh, us three here, we have a mutual friend with you, Mister Sloppy Joe, the esports driver from RCR. Yeah. Uh, and I gotta ask you, uh, how do you feel about uh, Caterpillar not inviting you to be part of Cat Trials like they had him out there for? Yeah, I was. Um, I was just messing with them, but it's a really cool. Uh, it's a really cool opportunity. I was really happy that he was able to go out there and do that you know i think it's it's just extremely awesome that caterpillar is you know willing to work with not just me but work with joey and 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 everyone else involved i mean uh you know he runs their colors runs a very similar scheme obviously with the number and the location of the sponsor is a little different but he's pretty much running the exact same car uh, on nascar heat so i was it was really cool to see it i was a little jealous i'm not gonna lie i've been able to do a lot of really cool things in my short time and even considering how crazy this year has been, not being able to do everything. Uh, so once I when I when I saw that, I um, was really happy for him. But you know, I was a little little jealous. I'm not gonna lie. It looked like a lot of fun. No doubt about it. Caterpillar has definitely been one of the longest uh, standing sponsors in the sport of NASCAR. Been with Richard Childress Racing for quite a long time now, and would love to see them around for much more. Uh, and again, happy to see them really going all in to the RCR program with not just you, but also the esports program as well and, and other aspects that they're doing. But with that being said, Jarrett is going to transition us into some fan questions he's found throughout Twitter and the YouTube community tabs. Yes. Yeah, so, so, uh, the first one is what's it like? It's from Bob. Uh, says what's it like being a rookie with no practice or qualifying each week? Well, that's a great question, uh, Bob. And for me, um, it's there's been there's been good and bad to it. I think it's been about a, a break even when uh, we go to tracks like like Homestead. Even even though I've never been in a Cup car there, I just have a good feel for that racetrack. And it's a huge advantage for me when we go there. Um, we were really set up for perfect weather conditions and or not perfect weather conditions but running on time and running in the heat of the day we would have been outstanding there uh and i think when the track cooled off it kind of came into the wheel those drivers and those teams have kind of been used to running with the championship event being later in the year and at night so it's good for us when we're right and it's good for us in those kind of racetracks like that at darlington those those type of tracks where it hurts me is at places where i got a lot of room to improve a place like richmond it took me 300 laps to finally consistently do what I needed to do. And then we were able to get in range of the top 10, finish 11 places like uh, the Roval, which is crazy. Cause I feel like the Xfinity stuff. And, it, and again, it's because there's, there, there's no practice now with the practice and everything on these road courses, I could get close at the start of the race and then have a decent day. And now, you know, the Daytona road course and the Roval, you no know, practice. I'm having to, you know, I, I know what I need to do, but my confidence just isn't there. Cause I haven't still to this, to this point, not a lot of road course experience. So, it goes both ways. Uh, Aaron on Twitter asks, do you have any pre-race superstitions? No, I've always joked that I guess, well, I guess it doesn't really make sense, actually. I feel like my pre-race superstition is not having them. Part 
just don't be uh, Brandon Jones late. That's the only thing. Just make sure you show up on time. Uh, and it actually happened to me at the Daytona Road Course, I believe it was. Um, last minute, they moved up intros like 15 minutes. I left my phone and um, my bus that I, that I lease. And Kayla's my PR my PR rep, Kayla Wapham, is blowing me up. Like, Tyler, you need to get pit road, pit road, whatever. I don't know because I don't have my phone. I got like, uh, I was past Tony Lunders, who's with Chip Nasty Racing. He's like, shouldn't be out there right now. I'm like, man, I'm like, I'm actually kind of early for me today. So that's my only thing is just make sure you show up when the engines are firing. So, <laughs> so uh, Denny delivers on uh, Twitter also asks, uh, what is your take on the gifts of you with croissants on Twitter? What is my take on it? I, I guess like he, I, I think he just wants to know like, like what was the deal this. with that that day? I, There's I, like ones of you like using croissants. And I mean, you know. I, I think he's asking more, what do you think about some who may see it like more as a meme or something like that? Yeah, I think I it's mean, a I, meme. I, I ate a lot of croissants that day. I um, enjoyed shooting all the little things that we did. We had some, some of the ideas were pre-planned out, but uh, a, a good bit of them, I just, we just kind of winged it. I thought it'd be funny to just do things. And uh, we had a lot of croissants around me that day. I, I'm pretty sure I ate like five or six pounds of croissants. So it was, it was a great day, but I ate way too many of them, but they were so good. So it didn't matter. We just kept doing stuff. So I think it's hilarious. So when, I, I enjoy doing it and so did everyone else. When you shoot those things, do they tell you, hey, this is going to be just for like a GIF on Twitter or do they like tell you that it's for something much bigger and, and grander than that well um the you know when you when you shoot a when you shoot a gif i mean we we set we we were set up to to shoot gifts we that's what we were doing so we knew uh, we didn't i think we kind of uh, said something about putting them together and and that they were going to be out there um but we didn't obviously like put together an entire post of all of them so it's just been kind of fun to have them there you know cheddar's and in RCR and myself, we all kind of did it and we used some of them when we, we talked about doing it. And then we've been able to just, you know, when the timing's been right, piece them together in the right moments and, and they just go well with a good tweet. And <laughs> one thing is for sure, it's definitely clever marketing because it gets a lot of people talking and might make a few people want a tasty buttery croissant. And Mr. Reddick, where can you get those croissants? <laughs> well, I just mentioned Cheddar's. Uh, Cheddar Scratch <laughs> Kitchen is where you can get them um I, i've been fortunate I've, I've had them brought to me at, here at the shop or when we're, we're doing shoots and stuff so that's been nice but the easiest way to get them for sure is, is going to uh going to a cheddar scratch kitchen ordering them online and the best thing is if you order them online on race day you get 15 percent off with the code race day too so there's a little plug but honestly you, you can get them delivered you can you can go pick them up you, you know you can there's a multitude of ways to get some honey butter croissants and man they are so good. That's why I'd rather go go there to get them. They're fresh right out of the end. Listen to him. Oh, it's classic over here. He, he <laughs> no, no, no. There's, there's nothing classic about it. This is just a pure love and passion for how good the <laughs> taste, man. Like, uh, no, they are no, so I'm, good. I'm, I'm, it, it's all good right there. They are so good. We're filming a GIF as we speak, actually, so we'll be using that um, <laughs> yeah. later. <laughs> well, yeah, they're so good. It's insane. There's one question left that uh, I saved for last. I don't get it. You might have to explain this one to me. Um, but we got it from a mutual friend. It says, hey, Tyler, I've heard Joey Stone is a better esports and NASCAR heat driver than you. Also, I've been drinking a lot of water, and I've come to the assumption that drinking water out of an empty milk gallon is way better than anything else. What do you think? This is definitely not your teammate asking. So I, I don't, I honestly don't know what's going on here. Wild so, and wacky question you found, Jared. Yeah. Man, that's well, that well, funny. Well, we were. Yeah, what, we were what's texting the earlier today about that. I was, he had noticed that I'd lost some weight and was looking a little bit better. I, I did a, a push up challenge that, that Austin had nominated me to do um, for veteran suicide awareness. And uh, he noticed like I was in, I'd looked like I'd lost some weight. I had, you know, I, I, I ate a lot of, I was eating a lot of honey butter croissants for, for a time when we were doing a lot of shoots and stuff. And, uh, you know, just, I was just sharing some of my thoughts and things that, were good for me that helped me and i thought it was absolutely disgusting that he was just gonna dump you know after he'd finished you know his milk milk ga gallon of milk he was just gonna fill it up with water and drink out of it i thought it was terribly disgusting i was telling him he needs to get a good cup he, you know i was giving him all the options like you can get it you can get this kind of cup that's easy to wash or you can get this cup that's convenient to carry and he was just trolling me with all this i'm just gonna use a milk jug 
stuff and it drove me insane you know i even got it i didn't respond to him yet because i was i was driving but i i got i i saw it earlier on my phone there was a, a picture of a milk jug sitting on top of the car i don't know if it was his that he left or forgot or if somebody else was doing it and i i was like all right do it man just drink your nasty water i mean that's that's probably gonna be gross i'd rather drink it out of something like clean and and uh you know dishwash and whatnot so there's the insight of our conversation today conveniently enough if you go to a grocery store you can buy water in a milk jug that was made to have water in it so <laughs> yeah well that too well i mean if you're going to refill it you know it's a little bit cheaper i we're uh, for for bow we're we're still buying uh nursery water and whatnot just because it's it's i mean it's fairly cheap and um it's it's for babies so you know the hard water as crazy as it sounds i guess it can be a little little tough on their stomach at first so eventually obviously you know he's gonna drink normal water like the rest of us how, how is Bo <laughs> but, doing by the way oh he's awesome he's uh um, oof uh he's uh he's it's just it's a new experience every day um it's it i i, I between uh since last night, I haven't really seen him all day. When I get home, I actually won't even see him when I, I hit, when I get home. I'll already be in bed. But tomorrow morning, when I wake up, um, you know, I'll get to see him. If I go like a day or a day and a half ish, a day or two, where I'm just just unfortunately out of the door when he's awake, and at one the moment I am home, running from one thing to the next, that he's asleep, kind of miss. It's crazy how much he changes two days. Um, last week before I left, uh, before Kansas. He was kind of figuring out how to crawl up, pick him, holding himself up on on certain things like using the couch to hold himself up or whatnot. So we were walking around. I'd hold his arms up and just kind of let him feel it out. And he's he's almost figured out how to. He can he understand how to walk. He's just got to figure out kind of how to balance himself and hold himself upright without falling over. And he'll be off running here very soon. So it's crazy how fast they learn. Well, hopefully, awesome. hopefully things get better at, over the next keep like one or two years and we can see Bo at the racetrack with you sometime. I know that would be great. It's, it's been unfortunate because, um, you know, uh, NASCAR allows one guest to still go to the deal, uh, whatever. Um, but it's like, you know, you can bring your one guest, but no minors. And it's like, well, with, with a lot of these drivers that have families, it's like, well, What's I guess I mm -hmm. can't bring anybody because I can't bring mom What are the kids going to do. <laughs> so yeah, it, it stings, but hopefully soon. Bo can go to some of these races and and see and, and you know be able to watch what's going on. Uh, I believe at uh, the All Star race, uh, he had the opportunity. He actually got to go to the All Star race. It unfortunately was not a very long lived event for me. Uh, you know they were allowing fans in the stands, and uh, the sponsor had a suite and, and they allowed my family to to go up there and watch, which was really cool. So Bo got to watch me race, even though it was not for a very long time <laughs> and it wasn't a very good outing for me. He still got to see something this year, which was great. Well, certainly good memories to be had with you and Bo, and we look forward to the day where you're able to have him out the track uh, enjoying those buttery croissants and all that comes <laughs> with the good days of the NASCAR Cup Series. But, Tyler, we appreciate you coming on with us today, and we hope to have you back on in the future. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you all for, for having me. Appreciate it, and, and uh, look forward to the next one. Man, that was two NASCAR Cup drivers. Really get better than that? Well, hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Early. Let's get back to the live show let's head on back over to Jarrett live myself and let's get back to the NASCAR weekly podcast what do we have to do now the picks and we are back thank you so much to Corey LaJoy and Tyler Reddick for coming on the show Eric is cleaning his glasses dirty uh, as hell I don't know what happened dirty air got onto it that <laughs> that segment of the that segment of the show was brought to you by our friends over at croissant <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. We cannot. We can, we cannot hide it anymore. Okay. The entire time during this interview, these two and I have been. We laughing were laughing our about butt bread. <laughs> and croissant. Croissants and are you, crust. Are you going to finish? Tyler, are you going to finish that croissant? <laughs> what was it? <laughs> <laughs> Rest in peace to our that was Spotify pretty good. Listeners. Yeah. <laughs> oh, God, I'm praying. <laughs> God. <laughs> I've been oh, trying God. to hold it together and I can't. Who, who knew bread oh, could be this God. amusing? 
<laughs> well, and then, the, and then the chat going on and on about their damn jokes too. <laughs> somebody, somebody needs to, somebody needs to the. Uh, go back and record Eric saying, who knew Brad could be this amusing? And then go tweet for, uh, Brad Perez or Brad Perez. <laughs> oh, man. Um, there you go. <clears throat> wow. Um, what a night. We yeah, still have we a lot have, to get to. Yeah, hey, we, we five... moved around. Why did we move around? Why am I on the upper left now? I was in the bottom before we went Wait, to what? that. Hello up there. What the heck is going on? I don't like this. I want to go back. Let me back down on the bottom. Jarrett, Jarrett, turn off your screen. No, I can turn off my own screen. Hold on, hold on. There we go. I think Fixed. now it, sh it should have moved me to the bottom. Yeah, this is my spot. <laughs> I, like the I love how like, people are like, they've never seen me laugh like this. I don't think you realize, like, <clears throat> it's not normal for me to be the one laughing like this in the group. It, 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 <laughs> so. it, does, it doesn't work if I turn mine off. No, you're the host. So. Oh, geez. Um, okay. I'll play. So we, we, we should probably we should probably get to uh the topic so um yeah we still have we to three, get to tonight <laughs> we, we got three topics to go through then picks and then a big announcement we do have um, a big announcement so all 400 y'all watching you are not going to want to miss that announcement at the end it's oh, a, no. this is a, it, it, this a, is this is bigger than croissants this might be the biggest announcement we've made all season long we've had some pretty great episodes i don't want to spoil it but this is a pretty big one i just i just want to make sure all these people are, are know that while we may be joking about croissants right now <laughs> it's all to on its way towards an end goal that is greater than all of us we we might be having croissants <laughs> of someone famous <laughs> stop it <laughs> <laughs> now it's not me that's the one laughing as much uh anyway okay <clears throat> actual serious stories we're grown-ups here um, Chase Briscoe to the 14 and 20. <laughs> Ch Chase Briscoe's having Spotify croissants in the 14. <laughs> oh, gosh. Give up. <laughs> so, chat, anyone here from uh, the great country of France? Uh, <laughs> How's the croissants? All I keep thinking of, and I was laughing before we came back, was the, the Ratatouille line. It's the sound of the crust. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why. It's, I guess that, that makes me laugh. Oh we can edit this out God. before we put it on Spotify, right? Is that <laughs> no, it's no, staying. It's not, staying. No. no, this is staying. I, uh, to those who are watching this later or right now or listening, <laughs> I hope we're making your day better. <laughs> Oh my god! We, should, we really should be getting paid by Cheddar's for the, yeah. <laughs> for all this croissant. Cheddar, talk. Cheddar's, please pay. <laughs> yep. <laughs> all and right. You, you're right. You, okay. You found can, my weakness. Can, can, can we all just take a deep breath? Don't say the word. Just don't, don't say the word. Meditate. Breathe in. <sighs> breathe out. Croissant. No, 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 stop no, it. No, 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 no. I'm not ready yet. I'm not ready yet. <laughs> I love how our viewership keeps going up the more that we lose it. <laughs> they, they, they love seeing us suffer. This is why I listen at work. <laughs> oh gosh, it, 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 you, you might want to. You might want me to go ahead and read some of these super chats, but while we while we're still no, 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 we'll, we'll we'll read them afterwards. No, okay. no, actually, yeah, read them now so we don't do them during the okay. the announcement. No, okay, hopefully. okay. Um, NASCAR eighty eight, three ninety nine Canadian dollars. Appreciate it. Who should drive the thirty two for Go Fast Racing? That's actually a good question. I'm not quite sure who to put in that car. Honestly, no idea. You know, <clears throat> I got a uh, I got a reference for you that some people in the chat will get. It's a movie reference. I haven't I haven't cried that hard since the end of Titanic. <laughs> if you know what that's Wait. from, leave it in the chat. Wait, what movie is that from? Because I've seen. I know I. I don't know it. I'll give you a hint. Woody Harrelson. That's uh, there we go. All right. All right. <clears throat> that is uh, it. I can picture it now. Give it to us, chat. Gosh, what a name. Communist Tomato Head gives a dollar ninety nine. Brad has the car. He won with Richmond with going to Phoenix. Well Which is why I told you guys he's I think he might be the favorite for the championship, all things considered. I just gotta see <laughs> if he makes it there. Chris Cahill yeah. coming in with five Canadian dollars. <laughs> Stop. Wait a minute. Fill my cup. Nobody's gotten it, I don't, I don't think. Uh, Chris Cahill 
coming in with five dollars uh, Canadian money. Since the playoff era began in 2014, what four drivers have made a championship for at least four times over 50 or 50 percent? Uh, Kyle Busch. Kyle Busch, Denny Hamlin, Harvick. Harvick, and Truex. No, I don't think I don't think it's Hamlin. I think Hamlin's only made it like two or three times. Yes, someone got it. Morgan got it. It's from Zombieland. Uh, yes, there we go. <laughs> At least some of our some of our chat is cultured. I don't know who the other who the fourth one is. I know the other three because they've been in the most. I think yeah, Truex Harvick and Kyle Busch. I think it's probably Logano. It, pro- it probably is Logano because if you're if you're yeah. counting this year, so yeah. Uh, okay, Flying Gator coming up dollar ninety nine. Brennan Gone played basketball at Georgetown. And Eric, you looked this up. What was his what was his uh, average? I looked it up during the break. Yes, Brendan Gone, the driver of the 62 uh, car, played college basketball in the mid-90s. In his three seasons, he averaged 0.2 points per game. <laughs> and But what was I found interesting looking on Wikipedia is that he was a walk-on with Allen Iverson, who obviously went on to be one of the all-time yeah. great scorers in NBA. I think that's hilarious. I had no idea. That's super funny. <clears throat> Uh, another five Canadian dollars coming in from Chris Cahill. We appreciate that. And uh, unfortunately, I think it's a little too late for this one. He said, save this for your interview with Corey. But my question for him was, is there an, any driver besides his dad that had any influence in his racing career? But unfortunately, uh, that interview was pre-recorded, so I apologize that we couldn't ask that one, man. Sorry. Uh, Blue Jimmy 48 fan coming up $2. And again, we appreciate that, Blue Jimmy. No one, not a living soul, podcast crew, <laughs> croissant. <laughs> You will not break me. That's how they're going to break me next week. They're just going to super chat me, so I have to read the stupid word. <laughs> Irvin Alvarado coming at 49. Pizzas and croissants in one night. Now you guys are making hungry from two nations with motorsport history, France and Italy. Good interviews. We, ap- <laughs> we appreciate that, Irvin. Andrew Meyer coming at $2. The sound of the croissant. There we go. <laughs> <Stop it. laughs> <laughs> Chris St. John I'm not gonna lose it. Chris St. John coming with two 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 nine nine said this is why I listen at work, probably because we are making him laugh right now at work. Uh, I hope fired. so. I, I really hope so. Blue Jimmy forty eight fed, two dollars. Chat, we finally found a way to break them. <laughs> Ethan, Ethan, oh, 404 oh error. Gosh. Ethan Kane, dollar ninety nine. Croissant only fans for the win. <laughs> Yo, Jared's about to ruin his garage. <laughs> Cole Custard coming in to four ninety nine. Appreciate that. Cole <laughs> Cole Croissant. <laughs> what, his name All is right, Cole that was... Custard. That's funny. And then Kyle Kegerson. No, sorry, Kyle Keeg Kyle Keesgen coming in at fourteen ninety nine. I appreciate Ooh. that. That's very generous. If there's mm-hmm. any driver that's darn well earned a cup ride, it's Chase Briscoe. I agree with that. I agree yeah, after this season, too. for sure. I, I thought it was interesting that you know he found out. And uh, he was going to get the job with Tony Stewart at the dinner table, and they were probably having croissants, actually, to be honest. Uh, and then he found out, you know, he's getting he's getting the ride. And then, there you and, go. and then here's NASCAR nerd coming in at five dollars. Can I get you a croissant, young man? Yeah, you have to say it correctly. Croissant. Can I get you a croissant? <laughs> yeah, it's not not this croissant. Not not that. No, that's, I'm sorry. That's some... I'm sorry. Danny just says it right. Travis croissant. <laughs> The, 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 it, it's taken almost three years, but you finally found my weakness. There we go. Croissant. There better there better be a fake <clears throat> driver profile named Travis Croissant by the end of the night. I here I here I thought your your weakness was the Winston Cup point standings all along. I had no idea it was it was. We just had to get croissant. this man talking about bread. <laughs> And you put it like that. Why well, had the most fun podcast <laughs> had to do something with bread? It was the mayonnaise one a couple years ago, and now it's the croissants. Classic. Classic, classic. Ooh. Speaking of that last Super Chat, or second to last Super Chat, we should probably talk about Chase Briscoe, because that was yeah, pretty yeah. exciting stuff. That's a good segue into some real stuff. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I, I've been saying it all year. I, this, ever since that Kyle Busch uh, duel that he had, you know, that duel against Kyle Busch that – He's probably the most deserving driver down there of, of a, a, a cup ride. You know, Cindric's a close second, but yeah, I, I'm 100% down with it. And I saw the picture of uh, Tony Stewart's giant Bass Pro Shops home that he was in for, you know, finding out and the announcement and everything. It was it was about what I expected, but I, I'm happy with it. I, I don't expect him to come in and just, you know, tear it up and win eight races in his rookie year, but, you know, 
I, 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 I think that uh, I think he'll be a playoff driver. That's that's my take. I think he should goal should be playoffs. I Where can, you go from I, there makes it good. I could say playoffs in year one. I don't know if he'll get the win, but I could say playoffs. Yeah, I agree. Playoffs should be the goal. I do think it's going to be really crowded next year from around 10th through about 24th or 25th on the playoff grid just because, you you know, obviously this year there's a lot of good cars that didn't make the playoffs like Johnson, like Eric Jones. Uh, but next year you're only adding more. You're adding the Hamlin Jordan team. You're adding uh, Trackhouse, which is basically an RCR team. So you're going to have some more cars that might have a shot sneaking into the playoffs. Jones with Richard Petty is going to be interesting. So it might be difficult next year for a rookie to make the playoffs. But if anyone can, I think it's Briscoe. So that should definitely be the goal. But, yeah, I think he was the, a great choice to take over the 14 car. Nine wins this year, championship favorite. Why not? He's also essentially he's going to be 26 by the time next season starts, which is a little older than most rookies. Uh, we've seen it get into the Cup Series in recent years. The thing that's so cool about Chase Briscoe is so much is on his shoulders. Like, he is from Indiana. That's where Tony Stewart's from. He is driving the boss's car the first one that won a championship for the team you know the four car is obviously going to be remembered best for kevin harvick but the 14 that's boss's car right there so you have a you have a high expectation on you driving the boss's car yeah uh but i think that he wouldn't you know have it any other way to be completely honest with you i think that i i think he likes having the pressure on him he's more or less put pressure on himself all year to do better and he's just improved you know and done better now i don't think he's going to ascend the way he has as quickly as he has in cup like i said earlier but i think i'll put like i i think that he can be as competitive as clint boyer was in that car this year starting off i think so too little to no cup experience so i I'm excited. I'm actually pretty excited about next year you know there's a lot of new new names and new places and it, it it's gonna be it's gonna be a good year. <laughs> Knock on wood. I mean, we said the same thing about 2020, and yeah. oof, wow. Well. So, uh, we have some other free agency news. Uh, Eric Jones. Yeah, we talked about him a little bit earlier, bringing no sponsorship to that 43, but he's going to the 43 in 2021. That's one that I'm I'm puzzled by with how he'll do. I I'm. I mean, I, I think it's just. Oh my God! So sorry, I'm not trying to interrupt, but there, someone, there's a Travis Croissant in the chat now. There's a few Travis Croissants now. Whoa, that was quick. Very impressive. Good job. <clears throat> You're not breaking me again. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe, uh, but <laughs> no. So, so, I, I, so I have a in the show. Yeah, I, Eric Jones. I think 43 is the last place he had to go, and before <laughs> Richard Petty Motorsports, in my opinion, got. They got a bargain. Yeah. Yeah. I think Richard Petty got a steal, really, in this whole deal. I mean, Eric Jones obviously doesn't bring a lot of funding or doesn't bring any funding. So it's, I think ultimately they would have probably rather keep Bubba Wallace because he was the more surefire business move. But Eric Jones is a very nice backup. Uh, like you said, I think he was, I, I think, you know, this is honestly the best ride of still left for him to have landed in. And, uh, and I think he's also the best free agent, not named Kyle Larson on the market right now for Richard Petty to grab. So as far yeah. as purely talent i think eric jones is the best driver they've had in close to a decade i, mean, I think he's I, I mean marcus ambrose was a great road course racer but eric jones all around i think is going to be a better driver for uh for, for richard petty next season so I, i'm excited to see what they can do I, I i think eric jones is a little bit better than bubba wallace right now but with no funding or less funding next year i'm not convinced it's going to be a much better team i think it might be a little better i think they should I, their goal should be I top the I think the cars will make a difference between Eric Jones versus Bubba Wallace. I think Bubba Wallace will come out on the positive end of that. But for Eric Jones, I think it was coming down to it that his only options were realistically the 96 or the 43. And I think for him, the 43 definitely made the most sense out of those two. And likewise, for the 43 team, their options were keeping Ty Dillon and similar RCR equipment, which would have maybe made sense. But from a competitive standpoint – Eric Jones made more sense, and who would have been their other person? Corey LaJoy. No offense, he was on the show today, but you know. I think there was Eric a consideration Jones. for Suarez because he brings some funding, and and I know Andrew Merstein has said he, his goal is to to hire a lot of minority drivers. That was his initiative with Almarola and with Bubba, and I think Suarez was on his radar. He even mentioned Haley Deacon. Remember that? So oh, yeah, I, yeah. I definitely think Jones was not his first first choice, but. Uh, I, I think he got the most talented. Driver. He didn't get the richest driver, but he got the most talented driver he could, given who was still 
um, available. So, I, again, I, I, well, I, I wasn't saying but Eric Jones is going to run better than Bubba next year. I actually think Bubba will run better because he's in a Toyota. He, but I think, I think Jones is going to run better next year than Bubba did this year in that car by a slim margin. I think one, two spots better. Even in RPM equipment, let's not count Eric Jones out in the Bristol dirt race. That could still play into his favor. I think if it was the Bristol concrete race or whatever that, that track is made out of, I think would probably play better into Jones's hand. But Jones has emerged as a great super speedway racer. I don't think it's a fluke. He, too, he's won the Bush Clash. He's got his first win was Daytona. He should have won Talladega if Blaney didn't sideswipe him this year. Yeah, I think Eric Jones is a great super speedway racer. So that's, that's going to be his ticket into the playoffs. He's going to have three chances next year. It's going to be a bold statement. And I mean, no disrespect to Bubba on this, but I do, I, I'm predicting – I think Eric Jones could perform better in the 43 than Bubba did. Not not like I'm not saying he's going to set the world on fire I think so in too. seven races, but yeah, yeah. I, one I or two spots better, better. Yeah, I think he's a better driver, and I think there's there's a foundation that Bubba and and the team laid down this year that is a lot faster than years past. And they're keeping Jerry Baxter on next year, who I think made a lot of difference this year for that team. Yeah, I'm not I'm, I'm, not, I'm not going to say they're going to go out and win next year. I think they could win, yeah. but maybe not next year. They'll have better chances. Uh, to win next year, uh, I, I, I won't. I won't go and say that they're gonna, but I'll. I, I'll say that they could be a top twenty team. You know, I think that should be the goal: is top twenty in points, and I think it's doable. Try to I mean, try to threaten the top sixteen in points. Yeah, I mean, if you, in my opinion, if you're in there halfway through the regular season, if you're in that points battle, you still, you anything's open from that point and if somebody has like a late season collapse or something you know you're right there to to strike so look at i, a, I think it's a good good better a, move than people give it credit for look at a matt de benedetto was he the best driver this season no but he was solid enough to still make the playoffs yeah just need some yeah. good good runs get some good breaks get some stage points here and there you know i i don't know i i, I definitely think I think they're going to have a decent season. I think what, what I'm excited for is, like I said earlier, that Eric Jones is the best driver RPM has had in almost a decade, I'd say, at least. Uh, he's the first driver they've hired that shows up to the team already with a winning cup record. You know, Almirola didn't have any wins in cup. You know, uh, Bubba obviously didn't have any wins in cup, still doesn't have any wins in cup. Jones comes in a one year removed from the Southern 500. You know, I'm just saying, obviously he didn't perform as well as he should have this year in Joe Gibbs equipment, but Eric Jones is still no slouch. So I think hopefully it's a multi-year deal. They also mentioned, so maybe uh, a couple of years down the line, Jones could help elevate that team into a playoff contender. Before we go to the next right. one, I just want you guys to, to know that I'm holding it together, looking at the chat and that, that that's something else. That <laughs> are, is something else. What are they doing? Uh, what do you think they're doing? <laughs> the sound of the chat. <laughs> uh, do the wanna, sound do, of Do you want to say $2 comes in from Carl Singleton. Who will get the 88? That's likely Larson's car, but it's probably not the 88 in my opinion. I'm going five, man. I'm going on the five train. Uh, but, yeah, one more. One more. Uh, I must said one more wrong thing. Uh, one more. Silly season news update here. Haley Deegan's going to be in the truck series in 2021. And, uh, oh, yeah. I mean, she, she did better than I thought she would at, uh, at Kansas. You know, I was predicting her to be like sub 20th. I'll be honest. That's not a dig on her. It's just a brand new series. And she, I'd say quite well overall. Uh, she, she dodged the big thought. wreck. What I thought was interesting because she finished 16th, which was okay, but given there was like six trucks taken out in a big wreck, realistically, she probably would finish closer to 20th if that wreck hadn't happened. But, she, I thought she did well. And what I found interesting is that first stage, she almost went, or she did go a lap down. She got the lucky dog. Um, she was running a little over a second off the leader's pace each lap. By stage three, during long green flag runs, she was less than three, four tenths off from the leader's pace. So, so she made up several tenths just over the course of one race. So I was impressed. Like, like, like Jared said, I expected her to run outside the top 20 all night long and finish around 23rd, 24th. She did seven eight positions better so i was impressed and uh, talking about next year in trucks i i've been saying for a while that yeah i think she needs to get into trucks asap she's obviously being a deegan having a little bit of funding at least right now uh she's got cup racing on her radar a few years down the line important to get into trucks right now and learn as much as she can and she's going to learn a lot more running 15th 16th 17th in trucks than she would have than she would have running fourth or fifth in arca for another season so i'm excited for her to move to trucks i hope it goes well for her um I thought her I, debut at Kansas was solid. I think there's a lot of stress. Well, not really stress, but there, she, she and her team need to focus on doing something 
no other woman has ever done in any of NASCAR's top three series. Worry about being the first woman to win in Cup one day, but just be the first woman to win in NASCAR's top three series, and that would be huge. I'm not saying it's going to come next year, but within the next one or two years, she needs to try to have at least one win. I definitely think she she's her goal is to I don't know if her goal is to win next season. I think her goal next season is to is to maybe qualify for the playoffs or just um, just learn. I think I think I, I don't, it'll be difficult. It'll be interesting to hear what goal she has set for herself at the start of next season. But I, knowing Haley Deegan, you know the way everyone does, I, I don't think she looks at it as she wants to be the first woman to do anything. I think she has her goals set. I don't want to say higher than that, but I do think she looks past that. She just wants to be the best driver in, in the series. She wants to make the most noise. She wants to be the, the, the most vocal. She wants to, to kind of have the most commanding presence. I think on the racetrack is, is how it seems to me. So I, I definitely think she, she's got her, her eyes fixated, not further down the line as far as going, moving up to Xfinity or cup already, but I think she has just, bigger and broader goals in mind than, than something that quite that specific. Yeah, like if, if she's going to be in the truck series, she doesn't need to look at this as, oh, I'm just here as a stepping stone to get to cup. She needs to focus on, I am a truck series driver. Let's focus on doing the best in a truck series. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, I like the idea of... I don't know. Sorry to interrupt. But I feel like that was something that Danica did wrong when she was in Nationwide. She just saw it as a stepping stone, I think. Mm-hmm. I, I like the idea of, of racing, you know, it's better to race in, uh, you know, 15th to 20th in trucks rather than just in the middle of nowhere in Arca because there's like 12 cars on the track. Um, it kind of reminds me, I, I was listening to um, Moonhead and, and Windvow's podcast. And they were talking about that with iRacing. I think it's applicable here uh, that it's better to run with a bunch of people around your, you know, or in a league or in, you know, around your experience level and just sort of, and above your experience level to kind of learn from them, see what tricks they have. And I think that's applicable to real racing. I think that's one of the big carryovers. Um, so I, 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 you know, I don't think she's going to put up results right away. I, I wouldn't expect her in the first year, you know, as much as we might say this or that about the truck series, you know, isn't, you know, like the cup and, and cup drivers come down and dominate like Kyle Busch or Chase Elliott. It's still a pretty tough division to race in. There's a reason that, you know, you'll get, um, you know, you can look at different people who have jumped up from K and N and Arca and whatever you want to call it now. And, uh, and, and they don't come up and just dominate. Usually they usually come up and it takes a year or half a year to, to get the experience under their belt. So I, I just think that people need to, Pump the brakes, I guess, on uh, on these expectations because it's like half the people want her to fail and the other half the people want her to just go and they think she's going to win every week. It's I don't know. It, there's not, it's, there's it's not, not a lot of realists out there. I feel like with with no. Deegan, I think I think there's not people, not a lot of people, objectively looking at her experience level and looking at equipment she's in the series. I mean, the trucks, like you said, there's 15 to 20 pretty competitive trucks on a weekly basis these days, honestly. So uh, running top 15 is a con is an accomplishment, especially if you're a young driver, like she'll be. So um, certainly she's going to get more attention because, because of uh, her, her, in terms of her social media following, how how um, how big of a name she already is, she's going to get more attention than your average you know teenage or twenty year old prospect. So uh, you know it'll just be interesting to see how she handles that added bit of pressure next season. All right, um, real quick, I see some super chats that are coming in, kind of tie into the Deegan stuff. Carl Singleton coming in at five dollars. Bold prediction: Deegan wins Canadian Tire. Good take or bad take? I would say that's a good take. We've seen, actually seen quite a few first-time winners come at Canadian Tire, so that's actually not a bad idea at all. Uh, Nicholas Gray coming in at five dollars. On a scale of one to ten, with ten being the highest, what would y'all rate her performance? If we're, or if I guess we're, if that would be probably guessing uh, from Arca. I would say I give it a. Six and a half. I mean, she she did absolutely solid points wise. Like you know, granted, there's not enough full time competition in Arca to get what she got in points, but she still you know got a top five in Arca point standings, and that's as much as you can ask for anyone, really. Uh, if we're talking about Arca, I'll give her maybe a four because there's just not that many. Like she's supposed to finish top five in points, and uh, she didn't she didn't 
quite meet my expectations this year, but it was a weird year with less practice and everything. I, I'll cut her a little bit of slack. So I'll give her a four there. Her Kansas, if we're talking about her Kansas uh, performance, I'll give her a solid eight. I would, like I said, she exceeded my expectations. I'll, I'll give her a four or five. Like like I said, she's expected to do that. Like like people were, she's, you know, for celebrating, it's like she's been finishing in like the seventh position. It's like, that's Out of what 10. she's supposed <laughs> to do. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, it reminds me that, you know, it's, you want a cookie? You know, it, it's like she's, she is, is I, I'm assuming wanting to be one of the top drivers and, you know, equipment or not, people, you know, she shouldn't be, you know, I don't think she's like this. I think people are like this. People shouldn't be like celebrating the fact that she's running mediocre. Like, I, it's been a disappointing year, in my opinion. Like, I don't think there's any way around that, especially after the hype that came after her second place run at Daytona. I, it wasn't that great. And then, do we have any other super chats, or is that? Uh, that's I think it. that was the last that's one. That's the last super chat. So, are we moved on to picks at long last? I think we are. So, chat, when you're not putting croissant, uh, put your pick for who's going to suck while we we put our picks in. Car- so, uh, Car Nation just tweeted a picture of just a croissant and just tagged us in it. <laughs> of course he did. Oh, man. I'll start. I'll start. I have mine. My suck pick. All right, let's hear it. I originally had this guy going into the championship four this round. Um, I, I'm doubting that pick now after a mediocre performance at Kansas. I thought he'd run top five at Kansas. He really did not. He was like eighth or ninth. Um, Martin Truex Jr. does not have a great history at Texas Motor Speedway in recent years. I'm going Martin Truex Jr. He sucks. He's going to be in a must-win scenario at, at Martinsville. I still think he has a very good chance of winning Martinsville and making his way into the championship four, but uh, I don't see Texas doing him any favor. So I'll go Truex. I am going to be bold here. Since he secured his way in last week, I'm going to say Joe Logano has a bad week at Texas. Because we've seen that in the past. Like, think of Kurt Busch when he won Las Vegas. Granted, Talladega is a much different track. He went out and had an overall horrible day after that. I'm not going to popular with this. So I went back and I looked at just how... I know where you're going with this, I think. Drivers have been with this package at Texas. Oh, maybe not. This guy finished no higher than 13th at Texas in any of the, the these races with this package. How are you doing this? I know I'm going to get destroyed in there. Let it out. Go, go, go. It's going to be Chase Elliott, in my mm-hmm. opinion. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Oh, they're going to they're gonna kill me in the chat. There's going to be a lot of croissants they're, in the chat they're, after they're, that one. They're going to cross- they're, they're burn your croissant, man. They are going to butter your bread, Jared. <laughs> Gonna, we, we should have been prepared with better bread and croissant. You puns. see, you see your croissant; it's finished. <laughs> that might be good for my health's sake. Um, it looks like the chat's going with Denny Hamlin. It, uh, that's what it's looking like. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> sure, he wants blood. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do this to you guys often. I don't rip on Elliot as much as I used to. You know, I don't. Personally, I don't <laughs> want Elliot that much at all anymore, but Chad is on something else tonight. I'm sorry. The chat's <laughs> just flying right now. Yeah. They'll, they'll be, uh, when we announce our announcement, they'll be flying even more. Yeah. Remember, we do have a big announcement. Don't go anywhere. We have something crazy. Yeah. Maybe, maybe we'll break the streak of croissant. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, chat, while we're giving our dark horse slash underdog picks, what, what was there consensus? Yours? I couldn't see. Was it Hamlin or? Uh, it looked like Hamlin. Or true I mean, Yeah. I don't know. I think it was Hamlin. It started out like Johnson, and then it was like Bowman, and then it sort of just All right, devolved we'll just into Hamlin. Hamlin hate. All right, so uh, underdog pick. I'm not going to be super exciting with this one. I'm going to go with the guy who's on our show earlier tonight, earlier today, uh, who finished second here just a few short months ago, Tyler Reddick. I don't really remember where he was running uh, earlier this year. I feel like he was running in the top 15, like in the 12th, 13th, 14th range for a good portion of the day, which is better than average, I'd say, for him. But I think Reddick will be another top uh, five threat this weekend. I, th- I-, I do think this race is going to be really wacky because, as we saw in July, the tires just do not wear at Texas Motor Speedway. So when to pit, when not to pit is going to come into play. Um, I don't know. They may be bringing a different tire, but I don't think i haven't heard if they are or not so uh, i'll go reddick i think tyler reddick gets a solid top five run this weekend um 
Jared will be happy. I'll just say Bowman because this is the, this is their this is their last chance to get the run they need and can try to contend for a win. But I'm not saying they're winning, but this is their last chance to be an underdog. I love it when a good meme comes together. Um, and, and, so, then he, and then he's going to enjoy a croissant. Yes, he will. Well, when two good memes come together. Uh, so I talked about, you know, not finishing 13th. Well, this guy has finished in the top 15 with every race in this package. Uh, I think this might be a little more popular pick here um, because it, he just he's not spectacular, but he's solid. Uh, and who am I talking about? Well, I'm talking about Ryan Newman. I think Whoa. Ryan Newman is going to be the dark horse pick this week. I'm I'm going to be that guy that goes out there. That's a that's not that's a whim right there. That is a mm-hmm. pretty big fat whim. Hey, when we're talking dark horse, it can all be relative. I, am I talking a, a win dark horse? No, I'm talking maybe a top ten dark horse. Top you know that's a fun top one. Seven. So one. Uh, let's see what the chat's been saying because they always put whatever we pick to. Uh, a lot of people say Newman now, but I don't know who what they were saying before that. They were saying they were saying like Jimmy. And Truex. Yeah, a good amount of Jimmy's. Just so many Carl Weezers and croissants. It's so hard to pick out the, the real ones. Uh, it's looking... Let's see. I mean, it's looking like... Yeah, I mean, there's some Dylans too. Yeah. But it was... is it, it's I, hard. I'll say... I'm going to vote Jimmy. I think they're saying Jimmy. It's, it's seeming like Jimmy. So, I don't know. There's some Bowmans too. Mm, I don't know. Just say Hendrick. Really, Hendrick in general is going to be good. If we really wanted to go off what they were saying, it'd be croissant. Well, yes. Yeah. We can't do that. D- 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 Eric, you need to confirm if they sell croissants at Texas Motor Speedway concessions. I'm very sure they don't, but I will check for y'all. <laughs> Maybe Bucky's has some across the street. We'll see. <laughs> All right, that leaves the win pick left. Uh, so, chat, leave your win pick. I'll this is... The- this is going to be boring, but I'm I, again. I, I have the luxury of going first. I'm going Kevin Harvick. He's literally won three straight. No, well, this isn't November this year, but he's won three straight fall Texas races, including last year with this rules package. Um, he was one spot short at the last mile and a half last week at Kansas. Kevin Harvick's going to win, and he very well might skunk the field. I, I hope he doesn't, but I, I have a feeling that's what's going to happen. Even though I think it would be funny to see him somehow not make the championship for. I'm going to say Denny Hamlin on this one. Woo. You're disagreeing. I, I'm just already going to call it right now. Like we have enough, we have enough of the votes in uh, calling Texas for Kevin Harvick for the chat. Uh, for me, this guy finished eighth, first and fifth. Always gets better in the fall. Kevin Harvick is, is my pick too. I'm going back to that meme. Like that's, that's original, like first three episodes, Jarrett meme. Uh, on the podcast, but yeah, I'm going. Kevin Harvick, I think, is going to win this race. Would that be win number ten? Yeah, ten double digits. Ing. Yeah, this is like. Oh, I mean, we got some Tia Norfleet in there. We got some Jimmy's oh, again. Forgot about little Tia. She's she's doing. She's, <laughs> little she's, Tia. She's she's driving the '88 <laughs> like Menards truck. <laughs> on yeah. the video games. <laughs> Uh, real quick, do have some super jets here. Uh, clutch hat trick coming in at two ninety nine. How does Bell do next year? Maybe wins dirt race, maybe. But I think Larson's definitely more the favorite for that one. Uh, I think he'll do okay. I, I, he might make the playoffs. I think I he hope performs he a little worse than Eric Jones. Really? Ooh. Mm. Mm-hmm. I thought I was the Eric Jones fan in here. First, you're saying Jones is going to be better than Bubba for sure. Now you're saying he's going to be better than Bell or Bell's going to be worse. Than, oh, my goodness. I'm not saying they're going to tear up the world or crash and burn. I'm just saying that they're not going to be mm-hmm. the same. I, we still don't know who, who Bell's crew chief is going to be. I hope it's Ratcliffe still, but who knows? Call Perrin coming back. Well, that would obviously be best for company. You know, if they really want to win, they'll just they'll pay that man what he's worth. You know, <laughs> I, 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 in the long run, I don't think he's done. I, I think he's gonna come back. I don't know when, but I think he's gonna come back one day. Uh, Kr Williams thirty eight seventy six coming up two ninety nine. Appreciate that. I want to say Austin Dillon because he won last time. Eh. Hey, with, with that being said, you know I, I got Bowman as my underdog. We saw a much crazier finish last time, so anything can happen in Texas. So, yeah. It's not the uh, only one anymore. That's all the super chats. We still well, have I guess. 400 people watching. Is it time to hit them with the uh, with, with, the, with the warm buttery croissants? Yeah, yeah, Danny, it is. 
Yeah, yes, but yeah, overall it is. Um, okay, so simple stuff next week is on my channel at 8 p.m. Eastern time. David Land is one of the guests. So that that's always fun to have David Thank on. Thank you all for watching tonight. David Land is on next week. I know that's what you all were waiting for. <laughs> he has for. a huge following, covers IndyCar. And you NASCAR. may have heard of him. His name is David. His last name is Land. Land like what you are all sitting on more than likely. David like the the guy from the Bible. The guy who beat Goliath, that whole that whole deal. All right, all right, all right, all right. We, we should funny. probably tell him who the actual guest is. Who? Um, is he, I don't know. How do you intro let, a seven-time champion coming in, you know? We got, Danny we, we got Richard here. Petty? <laughs> no, 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 no. We got, uh, we got a, a younger one. We got Jimmy Johnson next week. Jimmy Johnson's going to be a pre-recorded interview on the podcast. And uh, so leave leave comments on uh, on this video. And I'm also going to – or uh, stream. And I'm also going to have a, uh, a video tomorrow that you can leave comments on as well as some community posts and, and, leave, and leave questions. Uh, we can't pick them all, obviously. But, yes, Jimmy Johnson is going to be on the show uh, from what's looking like. And, and we're going to be far away from the subject of croissants next week. <laughs> Yes, yes, we will. I can't wait. I can't wait. All 380 of you still watching, lick that like button if you're excited for Jimmy Johnson coming on. All of you listening on Spotify, uh, just share it with everybody that you can. Just get as many people to listen as possible. It's going to be an absolutely great episode. I'm sorry. I'm just laughing. Rusty would be the guy to do this. He put Dale Sr. in the chat. <laughs> nope. Uh, nope. Jimmy Johnson. Jimmy Johnson. Uh, we wouldn't we wouldn't joke about having a seven time champion on like seriously yeah, no. <laughs> All right, but here's someone who is excited. Blue Jimmy forty eight fan coming up two dollars saying I love you guys. Aww. We love you too, man. Uh, it's gonna be a be sure uh, to tune in. Yeah, it's gonna be a fun episode. Uh, don't know what part of the episode we'll we'll have it on, but it, it's gonna be good. It's you're not gonna want to miss it. And who knows? We might have because uh, let me let me look at the. Uh, the schedule right now but we might have another announcement or two before the end of the year uh so we got three episodes left uh of course next week my channel uh then november 4th at least tentatively you can always change one way or the other uh we'll be on danny's channel and then we'll be november 11th on uh, eric's channel season finale and we got some cool stuff planned for you so so be sure make sure to follow us all on Twitter, Instagram, everything. Subscribe to us. Keep up to date on it because uh, we think that we think there might be some more stuff you'll uh, you'll be pretty excited about. Just letting you know now. Yeah, but, right. uh, it's I, super I, exciting. I, and if anyone's at Texas this weekend, I will be at the Texas race. Feel free to come up and say hi. Take a photo. Um, I'll probably be wearing a mask and everything. I got these stickers, so if you want an out of the groove sticker, I'll be giving out out of the groove stickers as well, and it'll be a good time. So hopefully, you see some of y'all there. Yep, and. Uh, with that being said, there's anything else? No croissants? We good? Uh, nope, nope. Just, just stay with call. I'm backing up, backing up. I don't want to destroy my microphone too much. Are we ready? Yeah. Oh, we're ready. Send us on out. We're ready. <laughs>